the two teams are out on the ice. The officials have just arrived. And down in the bottom left corner of your picture, you'll see a battery of what they call EMG units. The electronic news gathering outfits, those video cameras, plus some still cameras. And we're getting ready for a special presentation tonight to the Islander captain who recently smashed Bobby Orr's record and has become the all-time highest scoring defenseman in the history of the National Hockey League. We have not been made aware of what is going to be happening. We're glad that you joined us, and you'll be as surprised as the captain and everybody assembled here at the Nassau Coliseum. Danny Puffin, three goals shy of Bobby Orr, lifetime. Now Jim Patterson, the public address announcer, with tonight's ceremonies as you look at the captain. Since arriving on Long Island back in 1973 as the NHL's number one overall draft, Dennis has won the Calder Trophy as the league's top rookie. He's won the Norris Trophy as the NHL's best defenseman three different times. And he's been elected first-team All-Star five times. In 887 games in the NHL, Dennis has scored 267 goals. He's added 653 assists for 920 points, breaking Bobby Orr's all-time mark of 915 on December 20th. And we honor him tonight for that very special achievement, the NHL's all-time leading defensive scorer. A standing ovation for the captain. You heard the numbers and the feats that have been accomplished. And still over half this season to go, and I'm sure at least a couple more seasons for Denny Potter. Denny has quite a few interests outside of hockey, but none more favored than his fishing. He and his wife, Valerie, have been to a lot of fishing places in North America, most recently Canada's Northwest Territories. And you know, it's not always easy to get to those remote fishing holes, and so tonight the Islanders are going to make it a little easier for him and his pal to go fishing. beautiful Chevrolet blazer is Valerie. I wonder if she's driving the car. <laughs> we'll find out. Dennis, the Islanders Valerie. are happy to give you a 1986 Chevrolet blazer. And so that you never lose it in a parking lot, you can check out the plates. It says five aisles. Of course, it's a little easier to ticket you. <laughs> yes, comes with a personalized license tag. Five aisles. Dennis, with love from the Islanders and all of their fans, use it in good health when you go fishing. And of course, whenever you go, you'll take along your special pal. And as the canopies are rolled back, there is Mrs. Teddy Potman. Ladies Valerie. and gentlemen, Valerie Potman. Maybe it was the MVP that was driving. At this May time, have been their new daughter, like Madeline to Valerie Potvin, born this past July. Well. Dennis's brother, Jean. Five miles. And here's one more Potvin. His older brother, Jean, entering the picture now. I think this is a great way to start the new year. I hope Mr. Tory and Mr. Pickett have a tribute to me next year at the beginning of the season. <laughs> and a boy, right John, now, I'd like to ask Dennis, in. along with Valerie and the rest of you, to look up at the luxury box behind the south end of the building where it says Islanders, and there's a box to my right, and right up there, you're going to see my mother, Lucille Patman, and my brother, Bob, this moment comes and as a complete surprise to Denny. The Pop Van family is settled in one of the boxes, Denny's mother. Two boyhood friends of Denny. His brother Bob. We're talking about Laurier Beauchamp, along with Jay Bird, and Bill James up there. 
These people flew in today. Laurier flew in from Washington or from Montreal, and Jay flew in with his lovely wife from Washington. At this time, I guess I got to introduce a man that uh, to us has been obviously the builder of this team. And I got to say it again, they kept me in the dark about this up until six o'clock tonight. And I guess they thought I was going to blow the whistle. But as usual, I got to say the Islanders have done everything with an awful lot of class. And I know Denny will, but I want to thank them. Thanks a lot. Bill Torrey. Drafted. Denny Potvin. Dennis, throughout your career, you've not only brought great honor to yourself, but to your family and to our team. As a small token of our appreciation on behalf of our boss, John Pickett, and the entire team and the organization, I want to present you with this silver Tiffany tray, which reads as follows. December 20th, 1985, 916, Dennis Potvin, New York Islanders Hockey Club, all-time NHL record for most total points by a defenseman. Dennis has never played for another general manager or another coach in his NHL career. You think back to 1973, the year they drafted him, you had to know that even a year before that, Terry had to be looking at him Ladies and gentlemen, I for a pick. What did everybody? Tonight's performance should be the Boston Bruins, and I want to take this time to thank them for cooperating with this ceremony. But the man whose record Dennis broke, of course, was a great Boston Bruin. And I have here a letter written December 24th, and it says, Dear Dennis, congratulations. On and off the ice, you've been a class act all these years, making your team a winner while serving as a wonderful role model for thousands of kids who love our game. I'm personally very delighted for you breaking my record. Warmest personal regards, Bobby Orr. Congratulations, Dennis. Thank you. And you know, a lot of people wonder whether or not that really happens, but did you see looking over the shoulder of Bill Torrey the letter? recognize the signature that was for real <laughs> there had been hopes that Bobby would be here but a previous business commitment has kept him away from tonight's ceremonies <laughs> this has to be very difficult hardest part of being an athlete I, uh... <laughs> well I guess that the <laughs> The greatest, the greatest thing about all of this is that again, one of the, probably the the biggest uh, individual award being handed to me, and you know my my mother's here and family, lifelong friends, and all of you who uh, have really been part of this all of these years. Thank you for being here. But but you know there's <laughs> if there was ever a game where you needed a lot of help, hockey has been that game for me and I've had it throughout the years and all these guys over here. So many of them I've played with for so long and some of the new guys are helping me along and really to, to all the guys who played with me with the Islanders, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, the Islander organization, Mr. Pickett, Bill Torrey, Al, 
all the coaching staff, the trainers, thanks so much. This is fantastic. And the old mark was 915 points. Denny Popman now has totaled 920 National Hockey League points. 267 goals, three behind the record established by Bobby Orr. He has 653 assists. He trails Brad Park as far as most assists in an NHL career. Park with 683 when he retired. So while Denny doesn't lead either single category, when you add them all up, it comes to 920, and that's five more than Bobby Orr ever posted. Brad Park retired with 896 points, and you know that Denny Popvan is not finished yet. His 154 career playoff points shares third spot with Brian Trotche on the all-time list. He leads all playoff scorers with 101 assists, and his 167 games stand second only to Henri Richard's 180. And as a memento of tonight's festivities, as you see the brand new Chevy Blazer leaving the ice surface here at the Nassau Coliseum, each fan, when they arrived at the building, was presented with a poster. Not one word of advertising, just a commemorative poster with the date and the total points and the new high in NHL history established by number five, Denny Potvin. In just a few minutes, this hockey game will be underway between the New York Islanders and the Boston Bruins and some scratches. First for the Bruins, Eddie. Ken Linsman with a hand injury suffered against the Islanders in that game back in November. Markworth with a hip. Simonetti has a shoulder injury, and Louis Slager has a groin. Dave Reed is just a victim of numbers. For the Islanders, Ari Hanpa is starting to come around. Brent Sutter with the shoulder injury. Gord Deneen, Mark Hamway are victim of numbers also. Denny Potvang gets ready to go to work, talking it over with assistant coach Brian Kilray over at the Islander bench. Both teams get a moment to limber up here after the approximate 15-minute presentation. Still awaiting the removal of the carpet and the microphone as you look at Doug Keynes. Keynes has not won his last two starts for the Boston Bruins. He'll be opposing Bill Smith, so we get the same goaltending matchup tonight as we saw at the Boston Garden back on November 21st. Smith, lifetime against the Bruins. In regular season play is 11, 17, and 6. Played over 2,058 minutes. There's a man who will be receiving accolades down through the years as well. Mike Fossey, 498 career goals. He is number 11 on the all-time scoring list. A look at the Boston Bruins coach, Robert Thomas. Please call me Butch. Gory. Alger Joseph Harbour, please call me Al. The Islander coach. And now the teams lining up at their respective blue lines. And here is Joe Dewar for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. on the goaltenders. 27-year-old Doug Keynes is 10 sets and 3 on the season to 3.17 goals against average. He's only lost once in his career against the Islanders. At Boston, he is 2-0-2 lifetime in regular season play. At the other end of the ice, Bill Smith with a record coming in here tonight of 8 wins, 6 losses, 3 ties on the year of 3.82 goals against average. 11-17-6 and six lifetime against Boston. The referee will be Dan Marawelli. Trailed the Islanders over here from a game in Detroit on New Year's Eve. Apparently, he's joined by Kevin Collins and Dan McCourt as the linesman. 
against in one of the few teams the Islanders do not have a winning record against. They trail the series. 16 wins, 29 losses, and 8 ties. Ryan Trache at center ice between Bob Nystrom and Bob Bourne. Andy Boyd and Thomas Johnson on the Islander defense. Now Bork shooting it into the Islander zone. Stick saved by Bill Smith and Boyd. Picks it up, cleared it off the board, but right to Middleton. Rick Middleton centered one across. Out of the reach of Jay Miller, and there's Nystrom. Miller gets a piece of Nystrom. The puck comes around behind the net to Middleton, who couldn't center it in front of him. Boyd. Now it comes out in front off Smith's stick. Bork comes up the middle. His shot bounces off the pass. Another drive. Smith is saved, and the rebound is shot over the top of the net by Casper. Comes back to Miller here on the right wing. That shot missed the net. Moving it off the left side is Colleen. Trying to center it out in front, got knocked down by Nystrom. Casper trying to move the puck. The net comes off the pipe, or actually the magnet. They never get used to the magnets there. We get a play stoppage with Boston putting on all kinds of pressure. A lot of heavy pressure by the Boston Bruins. Bill Smith making a couple of stops. Let's take a look at some of the action here. The puck won't behave, but there it is, golfed at the net. That's a tough stop to make. You don't know where it's going to go. Look at that from point blank range. Miller's shot. Then with Middleton standing over on the left side, the puck flipped over his head on a rebound. Miller drilling it up over the top of the net. Bill Smith making a good save on the exchange. There we are, the win loss, 15, or 16, 29, and 8. Lifetime they have on the Chiron. 11 of those victories have been here at the Coliseum where the Allender totals are 11 wins, 14 losses, and a tie. At Boston over the years, the Allenders have won only five, lost 15, and tied seven. But again, like the Buffalo Sabres, they have a much better record in the playoffs than they do in the regular season. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the New York Islanders and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Islanders and Sports Channel is prohibited. Announcers on this telecast were selected by Sports Channel and approved by the New York Islanders. Ryan Trottier at center ice, Mike Bossy on right wing, Greg Gilbert on the left side, and the puck into the Boston zone for the first time. Bossy's centering attempt was broken up and brought out by Charlie Simmer. Gave it to Crowder, shot it in off the board. Smith started out of the net, and got too far ahead of him, and Randy Burridge went in after it. Zimmer unable to pick it up at the side of the Islander net. Now Trotche dumps it around the board. Luzak from the Boston defense dumped it to the corner. Picked up by Trotche. Lost it to Crowder back in the net. Up to Zimmer and a good stop by Sage. Zimmer reaches up, knocks it out of the air. Trotche, the next man to touch it. Thus no whistle and the Bruins regroup at center ice. Here's Randy Burry. He's checked on the play. Gilbert to Brian Trotche. Comes down the left side but does not have control of the puck and O'Connell has cleared it. Deep Crowder into center. Check from behind. The puck went loose for Morrow. Over to Denny Popan. Popan applauded as he handled the puck. Gave it to Bossy. Check right at the Islander line. Crowder coming back. Got tripped up. So Portal recovers for the Bruins. Played it back into the zone zone for Brian Curran. Curran comes to center. Slaps it in around the boards. Flatly over on right wing. Portnell stepped in front of him. Middleton trying to center one. Got it to Courtnall. Right back to Middleton. Comes in out of the corner. A bouncing puck is cleared by Potvin. Ends up in the center right zone. Curran hustling back. Keens way out of the net. Banks it off the boards here on left wing away from Potvin. But a two-line pass is called as Middleton gets a stick on it. There's a break of the action. 17-39 left in the first period. No score between the Islanders and the Bruins. All set for a face-off just inside the Boston blue line. Miko Makala scored the overtime goal to defeat the New York, or the Detroit Red Wings, rather, on New Year's Eve. With the center ice, Tonelli is on the left side, Flatley is on the right. And the Bruins start out, turn into the center ice zone, got bumped by Flatley. Riddick couldn't pick up the puck, and off the left wing side comes Cortnall, and good down to make the save as the Bruins came cruising through in front with Barry Peterson and Middleton following. Mike Bossy talked about the shooting accuracy of Rick Middleton on the Islander pregame show, and here he exhibits that exact talent. There's the pass. Look at how he makes the shot work quickly down, trying to block the shot. Let's take a look here. Pat Flatley, who so often gets hit, hands one out to Curran. You see Middleton dart into the picture to look for the loose puck. The Islanders, Bill Smith coming up big against Middleton. Chalvin out on the right side of the Boston defense. Curran on the left. Peterson gets the draw back to Chalvin. He's met immediately by Trotje. Peterson dumps one in front of the net. It's cleared by Smith. 
with Pache. Off the left wing for John Tonelli. Tonelli checked by Chalvin. The puck comes loose along the boards. Tonelli with it again. Back to Boyd and across to the right side now to Flatley. Flatley's pass comes outside the Islander line and recovered there by the Bruins. Chalvin to Curran. Dropped it to the Islander blue line. Johnson knocked it down. Played it up the right wing. Nothing doing for the Islanders. The puck came right back to Makala. Stepped over the Boston line. Comes in on goal and is checked from behind by Curran. Makala off the end board. Checked this time by Middleton. Chalvin lost it. It came bouncing right out in front of the net but recovered by Peterson. Up to Middleton. Middleton at center ice has shot it into the Islanders zone. This waits back to the net for the Islanders, giving it to John Tonelli. Tonelli stick handling out of his own zone. Got away from Passine, played it away from Courtnall, but nobody there at center ice for the Islanders. Passine comes in on the right side, fired one wide of the net. Flatley clears that into center ice. Greg Neenhouse back for the Bruins now. Neenhouse fires one from center ice that goes wide. Andy Boyd reached for it, knocked it down, but Gillies comes back in time to clear the puck. There's Neenhouse back at the Islander goal, couldn't center it. Casper gets a stick on it. Boyd takes him into the boards. Casper puts it out in front down. It comes back to the right side for Ray Bork. Bork trying to get in the round back of the center. So the loose puck, Kaleen, or Kaleen rather, at the blue line, shot it high. Here's Neenhouse with the drive. That was blocked by Boyd. Greg Neenhouse trying to step away from the check of Bacala. Boyd comes in to pick it up. Got the puck loose for Clark Gillies. Into the skates of Wayne Sutter. Out of Johnson, up to Gillies. Gillies works his way over the line with a shot that bounced off the legs of Tallinn. Picked up and held in by Dwayne Sutter. Centered, but out of the reach of LaFontaine. Toro fires one from the point. Blocked in front and loose puck, and the Bruins take over on their own end of the ice. Greg Neenhouse leads the rush. Gave it to Pacine here on the right wing. Pacine drops it back. Bork cruises up the middle, trying to get the shot. Does. Smith makes the save, and Gillies is there to clear it to center ice. Pacine back for Boston. Plays it up the right wing boards, and the Islanders have to chase it. Burridge goes into forecheck as Boro rounds the net. Dumps it out into center off O'Connell's stick to the length of the ice. So Keen works it around to the left wing corner for Boston to Gord Kluzak. Stolen by Tonelli into the corner for Knight from center. Fontaine got a bulk at it, but Keen's coming up big. Has made the save and held on. There's a break in the action with 15 minutes to play in the first period. No score between the Islanders and the Bruins. Even the coach needs a program sometimes. <laughs> coach Goring checking his lineup. Stanley Cup ring on each hand. Did you notice? No, I didn't. <laughs> Wearing the jewelry tonight as he returns to the Nassau Coliseum. First time as the head coach of the Bruins. That is in regular season play. Goal score in the first period. The puck comes bouncing off the boards and spun to O'Connell. To Peterson. Shoots it in high. Bill Smith comes out of the net, banks it off the left wing board. So Connell knocked it down, fires one that just missed the net. Ends up on the left side. Burridge moves in, tried to dump it off in front. Crowder was too well covered, and here's Bob Bourne. The nice room relayed it neatly to Boudelier. Over center ice with a pass to Tonelli on the left side. Couldn't get it back to Boudelier as O'Connell broke up the play. Now Crowder works it up right wing. This is Burridge, a rookie starting in, trying to get it to Charlie Simmer. It's stolen by Paul Boudelier. Now to Tonelli. Got it to the line, held in there by the Bruins. Burridge gets double teamed, and the puck comes outside the line. Warren moved up as Burridge dropped it back to Curran. Over to Telvin. Comes in on right wing. Telvin a drive. He scores! Telvin for Boston. Puts them on top. The goal will be at 5.51. From point blank range, they've had three good opportunities. Billy Smith has come up big each time. This time, Telvin. Here's the pass. Both teams changing on the fly. He crosses the blue line from the top of the circle right between the pads of Billy Smith. A tremendous blast. His third goal of the season. Right here, he lets it fly in motion. Bill Smith looks up. He knows what's happened. He didn't feel the puck hit his pad. It went between them. Now, Gerald Diddick and Denny Potvin out of defense for the Islanders, and they lose the puck. In on the left side comes Portnall. Right in. Smith the save. It's between his skates. Comes loose now and ends up in a pileup on the end boards as Potvin and Diddick get back with a couple of Bruins. Another close call. Bill Smith comes up big as the Bruins break away a two-on-one break. Good hard shot from Courtnall. Here he comes down the left wing side. He's got room. He's got time. He's got his head up. He tries to shovel it in between the legs. It hit Bill Smith's stick. It lay between his legs. Moving up quickly is Peterson, but he's checked from behind just as he gets ready to try and shovel it in between the legs of Bill Smith. 
Islanders gain control of the puck following the face-off in their own end of the ice, and Bourne has given it to Trotje, out to Bossy at center ice, couldn't control it. Ryan Curran, who drew one of the assists on that Bruin goal, has dumped it in. Back is Denny Potvin, gets hammered from behind as he made the play to Bourne, then up the right side, and Curran does not get out of the reach of Bossy. Ryan Curran recovers in time to send Court all over the line. Here's Middleton to Peterson, and he missed the net with a shot. The puck moves back to the net, cleared by Trotje, but not out till Bain at the right point. Shoots one, spit the save, and the rebound went to Bossy over on the right wing boards. Bossy checked in his own zone. Curran dumps it back to the net. Middleton centers, but Trotje is there. And the board steps over center ice and dumps it in around Bork. Facing it is Colleen to Portnall. Portnall fires it down into the Islanders' zone. Go far enough for icing. Both teams in the middle of changes. Boyd plays it quickly to the left side, but Bork stepped in front of Tonelli. Ray Bork works it around the board. Ray Greenhouse chasing it, picks it up. Bacala right on top of them. Greenhouse went down. The puck went to Janssen. To Tonelli, lost it to Bork. Bork checked in front by Randy Boyd. Good defensive play, and out come the Islanders. Tonelli leads the rush with one man back. Centers to Plotley, and it's tough stayed wide as it may have got off the stick hand of Doug Dean. For the Bruins is Casper. Pops it around the board. Neenhouse battling for it on the far wing, having trouble picking it up. Finally comes out to center ice, and Pacine was there. He's checked from behind. Patrick Flatley back into his own zone. Came to John Kelly. Flatley over the blue line. Flatley passed to Yachtson up the middle. He shoots Keynes to save the rebound. Goes off the skate and into the neck. Maybe a little dispute here. Tonelli made contact with the puck, but it went between the skates of Doug Keynes, and it's all even 1-1. Needed it desperately. They had to get something to get going. The Boston Bruins were coming close to widening their lead to two goals. Here's the backhand pass. Thomas Johnson walks in, held it using a screen. Good stop by Keene. Here's the loose puck tapped in between his legs. Did John Tonelli get a stick on it? Let's look again. There's the drop pass by Flatley to Thomas Johnson. He gets a good shot away using the defenseman. O'Connell is a screen. There's the stop. There's the puck as it gets in between his legs into the net. Not sure whether John Tonelli got a piece of it or not. It's his 12th goal, according to the pictures we're seeing. Tonelli making it 1-1. Goal will be at 7.49. Only the third shot for the Islanders. The Bruins have had nine, and now Boston in a delayed offside situation with the Islanders. So, the little air handles the puck, giving it to Kenny Morrow. Able to get it to Wayne Sutter and to hit one of the Bruins, so that's offside. There's a break in the action. The score tied. The Islanders won. The Boston Bruins won. Look at a fine gentleman and an outstanding linesman, Kevin Collins. Like a player that comes to play every night. He works very diligently as, his, as a, with his job as linesman. He is a guy who came to play every night. He helps play, not in the National Hockey League, but in the Eastern League, I believe. Good old Johnstown Jet days. There's a long shot. Gilly poking at the rebound. It just stayed wide on the stick side of Keynes after Morrow had kept it in at the Boston Blue Line. Marie's working from back of his own goal. Next one off the boards. It goes down into the Islanders' zone, recovered there by Morrow. Ian Boudelier from back of defense. LaFontaine centering for Mark Gillies and Dwayne Sutter tonight. Kenny Morrow's pass up the left side for Dwayne Sutter. Steps over the line with Gillies on the right. Sutter leads, with it left it on the boards at least. LaFontaine picks it up. LaFontaine tied up by Crowder. Dwayne Sutter digs it off the boards to Gillies. He gets checked in the corner as Curran was tight on top of him. And the Bruins just up and out into center ice off Crowder's stick. There's on a top hat out of the points now. The pass up right wing for Dwayne Sutter. It dumps it in. Keens out of the net to knock it down. This is Ray Bork. Bork into the center ice area. Works on top hand. Stopped and played it in deeper. Peterson and after. Put it out in front, but Crowder couldn't control it. Out comes Mike Bossy. Greg Gilbert checked right at center ice. Peterson's pass. He flex. Off the right wing board. Ryan Fletcher knocks it away from Cortnall. Bork with it in center ice. Shoots it into the Islanders zone. And back goes Stephen Pearson. Top hand. Left side for Greg Gilbert. Gilbert takes a look. Went into a check for Middleton. Recovered the puck in time. Dumped it into the Boston zone. Right to Keene. Lean. Lean around the boards. Greg Gilbert comes in after it. Gilbert trying to center it. It's knocked loose by Mike O'Connell. So 
Middleton starts out for Boston. Got the puck to Peterson. Comes over the line. Peterson trying to come in deep. Porkow trailing the play. And a good check by Randy Boyd. Stops Barry Peterson's pursuit. They tie it up in the boards. Deep in the Islander zone. And there's no further play. A fearsome duo. Peterson and Middleton. They've done well. Cortnall, a good left winger. But Randy Boyd does a great job of breaking up the play. He did the smart thing as a defenseman. He didn't fall for the fakes that go on, particularly from a player like Peterson. He played the body, took him out, nullifying the play. Middleton was trailing the play, looking for the loose puck, but Randy Boyd not only got the player Peterson, took him out heavily into the boards, but he also got the puck. The Bruins come in tonight off a 6-6 tie in Buffalo. The Islanders with an overtime victory on New Year's Eve at Detroit. Casper to face off here against Ryan Trotje. Trotje got it back to Boyd around to Janssen. Thomas Janssen carries it out of his own zone, comes over center ice, and it neatly to Flatley, trying to commit around Kluzak. Faced into the boards, now Flatley plays it back of the net. Doug Keynes had it right to Boyd. Randy Boyd played it just a little too high for John Tonelli. Tonelli centers to Flatley. Flatley back to the blue line. Janssen up the middle, his shot blocked in front, and then a good save by Keynes. Here's Flatley with a shot. Keynes makes the save and holds on. Keynes makes one big save off Bacala, then another off Flatley. There's a break in the action with just over nine minutes to play. In the first period, the score tied 1-1. Bruins got a big jump in the hockey game, but the Islanders are slowly coming back. Thomas Johnson to Miko Makala. Good stop by Keynes as he held his balance. Look at the play by Makala as he gets it back. Flatly rips one for the top right-hand corner. Keynes comes up like Billy Smith a moment ago with a big save. There he is, Doug Keynes. Lifetime with the Bruins. Two wins and two ties. No losses against the New York Islanders. Clear from a Boston zone, the length of the ice rolling on edge. Bill Smith will put a stick on it. Kenny Morrow in to pick it up. Morrow and Boudelier on defense. Kelly, McAvoy, and Flatley, the Islander forward. Morrow has played it around the board. There's Miller for Boston. Flatley checked him. Morrow plays it to right wing for Miko Makula. Back to Flatley, who's dumped it into center ice. Don Tonelli moves up. Gets over the Boston line. Trying to get around to the Goes back in the net and check there. Miller for Boston. Banks it off the boards, but right to Morrow. Dumps it into the corner. It's picked up by Tonelli. Just immediately by Curran. And now Flatley steps in. Flatley and Miller in a battle court. Both of them go to the deck. Flatley without a stick. Hits the puck into the corner. Tonelli trying to get separated from a check. Goes back in the net. The puck loose. On Tonelli. Had it knocked away. It comes to Pacine for the Bruins. Couldn't clear it out. Boudelier dumps it in deeper. Pacine dumps it the length of the ice now. It's going wide of the Islander net. And this will be called for icing as Moro puts his stick on it. More pressure by the Islanders as they keep it on. Keynes has been coming up big for Boston. Get ready for Sunday Chicago Bears. New York Giants matchup by catching Sports Channel's special presentation, Deadline to Glory. Join Ali Sherman Saturday at 10 p.m. and Sunday at 11 a.m. as he takes a look at the last time the Giants made it into the championship. The 1963 Bears-Giants championship game. That's Deadline to Glory Saturday at 10, Sunday at 11, right here on Sports Channel number one in New York sports. Kenny Potvin just tested Keynes with a shot to the point. Keynes made the save, and Crowder has come over the line, giving it to Zimmer. Zimmer forced to shoot it wide. It's picked up by Keith Crowder. Put it out in front. Burridge coming in. Got knocked down by Dwayne Sutter, and up comes Potvin. Right side, the pass went off LaFontaine. Skate stays in the Boston zone. LaFontaine in front to Potvin. It was too well covered. The Bruins trying to clear it out. Crowder does to Zimmer. Charlie Zimmer over the line with a pass to Bort. Back into the corner for Zimmer. In front to Burridge, and Smith came out to knock it away from the rookie, and there'll be a penalty as Potvin came in as well. And we're going to get a penalty against the New York Islanders, setting up the Boston Bruin power play. First penalty of this hockey game, 7.40 left in the first period. A break in the action. The score is tied 1-1. Islanders penalty, number five, Dennis Potvin. Dastardly Dan Morelli, how could you dare give Dennis Potvin a penalty on his night? There's Billy Smith stabbing at the puck. Potvin taking down Kortnall from behind gets an interference penalty. 14th overall, that's what the Bruins power play is in the National Hockey League. 
Middleton, Courtnall, and Peterson up front for Boston. Courtnall knocked down and being tied up in the boards by Morrill. Peterson digs the puck out of the corner. Plays it to the point. O'Connell started in. Trache knocked it away from him. It comes loose momentarily. Trache with it now is bumped from behind by Courtnall. Trache down on top of the puck. And it's used up 23 seconds of the Boston power play. Bruins have allowed three shorthanded goals so far this year, and the Islanders, as we have said before, haven't scored one. There's the power play, 14th overall, 39 goals, 192 opportunities for a 20.3% efficiency. There's the penalty killing of the Islanders, 19th overall in the National Hockey League, 42 goals they've given up and 155 times short. Eric Butch Goring on the pregame show tonight, bemoaning his special team's play. Bass compared to the Adamers. Smith clearing the puck around the boards in his own zone, and Thomas Johnson picks it up, flipped it high in the air. Bob Bourne knocked it down, laps it out into the center ice zone. Well, the Bruins reorganized the power play there. Talvin played it to the left side, came off the boards to Middleton, dropped it. Nobody there for the Bruins, and Thomas Johnson takes over. Get it to Bourne. Check right at the line, recovered the puck, picks it up again, fires one. Keen's a pad save. Talvin back of the net is checked by Bob Bourne. They both go to the net, and Talvin is going to go to the penalty box. Talvin, Michael Talvin has scored their opening goal here tonight. Doesn't believe the penalty call. It's not a good play by Talvin to take behind the net. Bourne got a good shot away. The Islanders without a shorthanded goal. Here's a good chance. You couldn't come any closer. Good stop by Keynes, but going behind the net. Talvin gets a hold of Bourne, takes him down. Bourne not in danger of scoring a goal in the Boston net at that point. It's not a good penalty to take, but he's got it anyway. Nullifies the power play that Boston was on. I think the Islanders outshot the Bruins on their power play. Uh, the hooking penalty, I would think that was. Yeah, hooking it is. You notice something missing in front of Mr. Talvin? Maybe that angle doesn't show it, but the glass is gone from down in front of the penalty box and the timekeeper's area. This apparently is an option that each of the teams or the off-ice officials have a say in, and these folks decided that they didn't really need it. Hmm. New York Islanders off-ice officials, well, they're not really, they're the NHL's off-ice officials here on on Long Island, don't like the glass. There's O'Connell with a shot, Smith the pad save, and Boudelier comes back to pick it up. Oh, Boudelier works it to right wing, John Tonelli over to flip it high in the air, and it bounces, ends up in the Boston zone, cleared up by O'Connell. The passer got it to Ray Bork, who was coming back. Now to Michael O'Connell, he's across the line with Tassin. O'Connell shoots it in around the boards. Exactly, goes to the far corner to pick it up. Throws it around to the, this near side. Paul Boudelier away from the check thrown by Pacine and Boudelier comes to center. Turns back, takes a look, holds it at the blue line as Johnson comes out to replace Morrow. Johnson picks up the puck and steps over center ice. Backhanded it into the Boston zone. Keynes comes out of the net. Lattie comes in before check. And the Bruins able to move up right wing. Only Trache is there to step in front of Casper. Diane Trache holding the puck at center. Gave it to Boyd. Not bad, ready to step out on the ice. And now the Islanders have a bad advantage. Johnson leads it up to Michael Bossy. Bossy dumps it in wide to Doug Keynes. Luzak and Trache going after it together. It's picked up by Bossy. Comes to the side of the net and O'Connell knocks it off his stick. Potan moves that on the right wing boards to pick up the puck. And he caught that. Centers one. Bossy gets turned around. Couldn't get a shot away. Potan holds it right on the blue line. And then on the left wing side for Johnson. Back to Potan. Over to Greg Gilbert. Gilbert holding it. Then it's a pop band. This time it comes off. He's taken out at center ice. Johnson has to come back. 20 seconds remaining in this power play. Trache takes the breaking pass. Coming in on goal is double team. Got it to Bossy. Shoots. Good stop by Keen. So the rebound is cleared. Gilbert got it to Bossy. Back of the net. He's being tied up. And Bossy finally knocked down as Pelling got a piece of him. This is Trache trying to get it to the blue line. The play broken up. And the Bruins are back at full strength. So neither team able to score with the man of Advantage. It remains a 1-1 tie. Little less than five minutes to go in the first period. Johnson works the puck to Trotje. Up again to the Boston zone. You see Keen playing around behind the net intended for Bork. Bossy tying up Bork. The puck came loose. Gary Peterson, a long pass to Courtnall. Steps over the line. Shot it off. Boros stick and brutally reach. Couldn't knock it away. And Middleton got a crack at Bill Smith, only to be stopped. Puck loose in the far corner. There's LaFontaine. That 
LaFontaine, Greg Gilbert. And Blaine Sutter out on the ice now for the Islanders. LaFontaine moved into center ice. The puck knocked away from him. The Islanders have to chase it again. Sutter, LaFontaine, and Gillies. The puck skipped off the boards and comes loose. Taken by Middleton. Middleton put it in front. Courtnall shot was blocked. Courtnall trying to center it again. Dumps it around behind the net instead. Morrow got a piece of Middleton knocking him down. And Gillies trying to pick it up in the corner. Sidestep the check from Peterson. The puck loose. Morrow and Middleton battle for it. Morrow runs into Jeff Courtnall. The puck ends up in the far corner. Morrow and Courtnall collided again as Wayne Sutter got it to Gillies. Off his stick into center ice and shot back in under the late offside. Call down. It's going to be brought all the way down the ice. Three and a half minutes to play in the first period. There's a break in the action at the Coliseum where the score is tied 1-1. While we were away, a bench penalty. I don't think it was so much Butch Goring. I think it was Mike Milbury to the right of the coach, Butch Goring. Milbury, I thought it was, at that end of the bench, had said something to the referee, and they've given a minor penalty, a bench penalty, to the Boston Bruins. Milbury standing down to the right, where Butch Goring is facing now, was having quite a few words to say toward the referee, Dan Morelli, and he gave them a bench penalty. Kevin Collins has done a long stint over there at the Boston bench, talking to both Milbury and a couple of the other players. It was Collins who made the call on the intentional offside and taking the, the face off into the Boston zone, which upset, upset the Bruin coaching staff, and maybe the trainer, because I noticed the referee over talking to him as well. It does not pay to be vocal in a case like that. Maybe it would have been a series of things. Maybe one thing wouldn't get them. He may have warned them. Sometimes you wouldn't notice it from here. You wouldn't hear anything. That could have been the case. There might have been a warning given earlier, and finally the penalty handed out. The Islanders moved the puck around in the Boston zone, but have lost control of it. Canelli sends Boyd up the left side. He's dumped it in deep. He moves out of the net, lays it around the boards. In comes Pearson. It ended up in Casper skates, and he has left it high down into the Islanders zone. The Islanders, Flatley, Tonelli, and Makula, the forwards, Randy Boyd and Stephen Pearson on defense. The Islander rush broken up in center ice. The force back this time, it'll be Stephen Pearson in to pick it up. Pearson had a goal and a couple of assists against Detroit. Tuesday night, he's given it to Makula. The pass to Bossy intercepted. Middleton dumps it into center ice. Casper was there and fed it to Curran here on the right side. Ryan Curran dumps it back into his own zone. 55 seconds gone in the Islander power play. The Bruins have shot it down the ice. Back for it is Thomas Johnson. Middleton came into forecheck. Johnson gave it to Trottier. And takes a look. Has Bossy with him on the right. Gilbert on the left. He elected to shoot it in. Keane slowed it up. Comes back to the net to play it. Played it right to Bossy. Can't get it out in front as Curran was on top of him quickly. Now Gilbert takes it off the board. Got it to Bossy. Out in front to Pate. And he shoots it. Just missed the target. Gilbert trying to dig it off the boards, does. Trotche on the short side, can't stop it under Keynes. He's got his pad down on top of it. Several players down on the deck as well, and there'll be a face-off deep in the Boston zone. One of the Bruins has been injured, I believe. Her and Brian Trotche fell over backwards, over top of his leg. Dennis Potvin has a good opportunity. Bossy finds him coming in. Look at the Bruins behind the net. They're men short. There's the puck as it glances off Middleton. Also... Glances off Thalvin, and watch here as Brian Trotche gets upended as he falls over Curran backwards, being shoved out of the play. Right here, he stepped on him. I think that's what happened. You could see Brian Trotche lose his balance as he was pushed backwards, and he stepped on the Bruin player, that Brian Curran. At this point, he doesn't know how bad he's hurt. A lot of times you get hit like that or you get stepped on. You don't know how bad. All you know is that it hurts and your leg may go into a cramp. Let's take a look again. Watch the skates of Brian Trotche here as he's pushed backwards. Watch Brian Trotche's left skate right here. See him watching you step back. As he starts to step back, he steps. He's looking for ice. He's trying to hold his balance. The point of his skate, the toe of his skate goes right into the back of Curran's leg. That's how he was injured. You can see him now wincing in pain. He is 
is up and headed back to the Boston bench. Jim Garrigan, the new head trainer of the Bruins, out there helping him. They have an entire new training staff at Boston this year. Jim Garrigan and Larry Ness, who was formerly with the Minnesota North Stars, is the other gentleman over on the bench. He with the glasses greeting Kern now as he comes back. A fixture is missing Dan Canny, who started with the Boston Bruins back in 1962-63 season. Not there anymore. John Frosty Forrestal, his assistant for many, many years, among the missing also. The Islanders continue with the power play. Potvin trying to get the puck in along left wing. Was out of the reach of Bossy and Keynes. The goaltender played it to the corner. There's Gilbert with it. Back to Potvin. Fires one. Hit a stick and just went wide. Bossy got knocked down. Still put it out in front of the net, and it was grabbed there by Doug Keane. 19 seconds remaining in the penalty against the Bruins, the bench penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Dennis Potvin shot from the point again, this time deflected to the opposite side. There's Potvin's shot. Look at how it is. Nice and low. It's hard. Keen's reacting to the shot as he has to. The puck was deflected in front of him. Now Casper has cleared it into the Islander zone. Potvin back to pick it up. Time ticks off in this power play advantage. The score is tied 1-1 as Potvin brings it over center ice and shoots it in. Collision at the blue line. Sent Bossy flying and Keynes out of the net. Left it for Bork. He's cleared it into center where Middleton picks it up. Middleton and Corktall move in. Rick Middleton shifted. He left it on the doorstep. His teammate turned away from it. Ryan Trache comes over center ice. Into the Boston zone trying to make the play to Bossy who picks it up here in right wing. As Jeff and Cortnall comes over center on into the Islander zone. Jeff Cortnall dropped it to O'Connell, got a shot away, and it's picked off by Tonelli. On Tonelli sends Bossy up right wing into the Boston zone. Bossy holds it, gives it to Boudelier, comes in all alone, and missed the net with the drive. Cortnall over on the left side. Starts out for the Bruins. The pass went behind Middleton, and it will be picked up by Kenny Morrow. Gets it to Paul Boudelier. Boudelier at center ice, slaps it around the boards. Keane slows it up. Aline has it back of the net. Aline up the right side to Crowder. Crowder, rink wide to Charlie Timmer. Comes over the Islander line with Burry. Timmer got checked by Morrow. Recovers the puck. Gets away from Morrow. Goes to the corner. Played it to Crowder to the blue line. Aline with a shot to a screen. Smith just got a piece of that. John Tonelli here on the left wing is dumped it into center with 22 seconds left in the opening period. Fired right back into the Islander zone by Tallinn. Crowder in after it. Sharp angle down, got the catching glove on it, and has held the puck. 15 seconds left of the first period. Keith Crowder's shot coming out of the corner, a dangerous play, particularly if a goaltender leaves the goalpost looking for a player in front that he may think the puck is going to. That puck was deflected as Crowder shot it in front of the net. Bill Smith, though, veteran, stood his ground, picked it off with his catching mitt. The Boston Bruins now in the last three shifts have had two two-on-one breaks. Dennis Potvin, what a nice job he did breaking up the last one. Started out with Rick Middleton carrying the puck. He had Cortnall on his right side, but Potvin took it away from Middleton. Now Trache facing off with Peterson. Trache pulled the puck back to Denny Potvin. As a crowd went down, the puck knocked loose. Peterson puts it out in front. What a save by Bill Smith as Crowder came up the middle on Dwayne Sutter. Bruins unable to center it again, and as Wayne Sutter gets a stick on it, the period comes to a close, but the Bruins had a golden opportunity with only seconds remaining, only to be denied by number 31. Bill Smith, watch it again as Peterson Smith. finds his man. Keeps the game from falling behind, or at least I should say this team, the Islanders. There's the shot by Cordnall, a beauty, a hard shot. Smith makes the save as the bell goes, ending the period. After one, your score is the New York Islanders, and the Boston Bruins all tied up at 1-1. We'll be back with a recap after we pause for these messages. Stan Fischl here at Nassau Coliseum. It's a 1-1 tie. The Islanders and the Bruins at the end of the first period. My guest, as I mentioned, the man of the decade, the man of the hour, Captain Denny Potvin. And Denny, watching the stirring ceremonies before the game, I looked at you and I said, there had to be a lot of surprises. You did not know what was going to happen once the announcements were made. I'm very impressed with the way all of it was handled. I had no clue whatsoever. The only thing I had heard was the other night in Detroit, I was watching uh, between the periods and Jiggs and Eddie were talking about the surprises that they had in store for me. But uh, I felt that it would be probably no more than a, um, some sort of a, uh, 
an award or presentation of sorts. I had no idea that they'd go to the extent to bring my family and my dear, dear friends from uh, childhood to here to, uh, to witness this. I think the fans would be interested in knowing the uh, two particular friends who I noticed that you waved to. Obviously, you were stirred by their uh, appearance. Who were they? Well, I've, uh, we, Laurier Beauchamp's uh, neighbor was from the time I was about seven years old, and he had the paper out, and uh, we used to deliver the newspaper together back home. And uh, Jay Robertson is, again, a, a, a teenage uh, uh, friend that we, uh, we kind of grew up together, and we did all the good and bad things together. And Laurier and Jay have been my long, long time friends, and we keep in touch constantly, but uh, it's just such a thrill to have them here. I, I really can't express how wonderful it is. Your wife, Valerie, was uh, hidden in the car. Did you have any idea that she was going to be there? No. I, yesterday, I, I kind of sheepishly asked Valerie if she had thoughts of coming to the game, and I'd like her very much to be here because they're presenting some sort of award to me, and uh, I'd just like her to be there. Uh, when I went out, I kind of uh, looked up at the seats, you know, right away, and I noticed that Valerie wasn't there, and I thought... Oh, God, Valerie, don't be late for this one, you know. <laughs> and then when, when they pulled the drape back on the Jeep and I saw her inside, I was just shocked. I couldn't believe it, and she held a secret for that long. Your mother also is here. Uh, when did you realize that she, you didn't realize she was coming, I know that, but uh, when had you talked to her last? Well, I spoke to her uh, a few days ago, as the last week during the Christmas time, and I'd been trying to reach her yesterday and today, and the phone kept ringing off the hook, and I was saying to myself, well, I'll try and reach her later on. You know, she must be out partying, it's New Year's. Uh, but I had no indication that she'd be coming, and I kept looking at my brother saying, what's going on with the Jeep and all this? I had no idea, and he kept pointing up, you know, pointing up, and I thought he was pointing up at the scoreboard, and I kept looking up, and I didn't see anything particular until he announced that they were all there, and I saw Mom up there. There, my older brother Bob. What a thrill. <laughs> One of the uh, fellows in the stands was saying, how, how dare they call a penalty against you on your night? <laughs> well, especially an interference, you know, I mean, of all things, I want to get in the way of people. <laughs> Denny, the uh, presentation, uh, one of the things that was said was that uh, you had nuts about fishing. Uh, what kind of fishing do you like most? Primarily uh, fly fishing for trout and salmon. That's uh, what I enjoy the most. But any kind of fishing is uh, something that I enjoy. I just don't really like to go out too far in the ocean. I get a little queasy, but any time I can get a fish at the end of any kind of line, I'm happy. Well, on behalf of all the fans, Islander fans, all fans, we're very proud of you. Congratulations again. We'll have Jigs and Eddie right after this. center ice between Clark Gillies and Dwayne Sutter to open up this second period for the Bruins. Peterson between Middleton and Courtnall. The Islanders have Johnson and Boyd on defense. Colleen on one side and Bork on the other. Colleen played it across. Right back to Colleen. Colleen and Calvin are here for the Bruins tonight. Don't get them confused. Dwayne Sutter to LaFontaine. The pass off his gate. Are you talking to me? No, all right. Yeah. <laughs> talking to myself and everybody else. <laughs> Ray Port. Didn't turn outside the Boston line. LaFontaine moved in. It was knocked away from him. Picked up by Jeff Portnall. He is right up from behind. And LaFontaine is going to go out for a hooky. That LaFontaine sets up a Boston power play inside the first 32 seconds of this period. And it was 32. Jeff Courtnall that he pulled down from behind with a hook. In the center ice area, Pat LaFontaine gets a hold of the shoulders of Courtnall. Here he is. He's trying to stride. You can see what happens as his right arm gets pulled back. It's not so much the force of the pull by the stick of Pat LaFontaine. It's the balance. That's what happened. His left foot's on the ice. It pulls him around backwards. He has no edge then to gain his balance with one his right leg is off the ice. His weight is on the outside edge of his left skate. And down he goes. Kind of soft and easy, but it's a hooking penalty. So the Bruins, with a mad advantage, have dumped it in. Pearson goes in after it. Got tied up. Still managed to get the puck to the stick of Bourne. Up to Greg Gilbert. Works on O'Connell as he comes into the Boston zone. But O'Connell slowed him up long enough to make the play offside. Fontaine for hooking at the 32-second mark coming back in front of the Islander bench, and there is a look at a very pleasant surprise for the Boston Bruins. Randy Burry called up because of all the injuries, a late-round draft choice this past summer. The Ontario Hockey League, OHL at Peterborough. Scored a goal against the Islanders, the last hockey game. 
the only goal for the Bruins here tonight as well. Johnson holding the puck in the Boston zone, got knocked down, still managed to get it just wide on that shot. It's picked up by Ray Bork. Bork starting out. They're using Burridge on their power play along with Simmer and Crowder. O'Connell got it into the Islander zone. Popang got it out. 40 seconds gone now on LaFontaine's penalty as Keynes left it back in the net. It's picked up by Bork. Ray Bork to the left side. Randy Burridge picks it up on left wing into the Islander zone. He's knocked down by Pearson and Popan picks up the puck. Left it to the right side, but right to O'Connell comes in with a blast. That went wide of the net. See how important it is to hit the net. O'Connell's shot. That's Mike O'Connell. Drills it, but he's well wide of the net. Like the Islanders wanted to do it. Shoot it down the ice. Now less than a minute to go on the bad advantage, and Ray Bork sends Burridge up the left side. He couldn't pick up the pass, however, and Morrow bears it out into center ice and all the way back into the Bruins' zone. And it's Bork rounding the net with it. Ron Stelly had moved into four check. Bork comes up the right side. Stelly tipped the pass. Peterson got a stick on it. Here's Bork set up for Middleton and went off the goalpost. Middleton flipped it up at the backhand. Now at the right point. The long drive. Smith the pad save. And it ends up here on right wing. Patrick Flatley clears it out into center right. Back for the Bruins. Number 22, Michael Talby. Talbine, long pass. Cortnall coming in off the left wing. Center Smith got a poke at that. And John Tonelli clears it up to Patrick Flatley. Flatley ran out of skating room as Kluzak took him into the board. There's Gord Kluzak. Plays it to the right side. And the muscle is way in. Has dumped it behind the goal. It's picked up and cleared by Boudelier. Out on the right side, LaFontaine, who is just out of the penalty box, gets control of it. Then was checked by Kluzak. The pass to Middleton to Cortnall. Back to Middleton. Comes in. Stop. Shoots. Fits the save. Cortnall is there. Jeff Cortnall trying to center it. Smith knocks it away. Cortnall rounds the net. Shoots. He scores! Cortnall comes from back of the net to give the Bruins a 2-1 lead. The penalty was over. Pat LaFontaine was in the center ice area trying to make a two-on-one break. And the Boston Bruins score a goal. They couldn't get a goal on a power play. But here at even strength from behind the net, Cortnall has a little room. He comes around. Middleton's in front. He gets a step out in front, turns and throws it at the net. And it gets in behind Billy Smith making it two to one. Good second effort by Cortnall as he gets behind the net, gets away from an Islander check, walks out from the side of the net and puts it in. His sixth goal of the season makes it two to one for the Boston Bruins. Now Janssen brings the Islanders into the Boston zone, played it to the right wing, Trotje and after it, Bossy back in the net, moved center and out in front. On the best and held there long enough for a face-off. The break of the action, 16-55, left in the second period, and your score is the Bruins two, the Islanders one. up two to one finishing a six game road trip here tonight what makes the trip even longer they tell me is that they've been home twice during the road trip they scored 20 goals have allowed 20 goals and that is coming in here tonight and almost gave up the 22nd as the Islanders were right on the doorstep there's Casper's pass knocked down by Dwayne Sutter turn shoot blocked in front Sutter dragged down as he went to shoot it here LaFontaine rather got dragged down by Casper and Stevie Casper is headed for the penalty box, setting up an Islander power play. Taking away what looked to be a sure goal, Casper grabs a hold of Pat LaFontaine, pulls him to the ice. Keynes was committed. He had knocked the puck away as he made the initial stop. There's a shot by Sutter. There's the stop by Keynes with the puck there. Pat LaFontaine ready to fire it into the top of the net. Casper hauls him down, takes a holding penalty. And the Islanders go to the power play. Let's take a look. There's the loose puck. Boom. Casper grabs a hold of LaFontaine. He was ready to let it fly. He had lots of net to shoot it into, but Casper grabbed a hold of him and hauled him down and takes the holding penalty. It's Trotje with Gilbert and Bossy. Popan and Pearson for the Islanders. Bossy picking up the puck following the draw. Gives it to Pearson. Up and Pearson across to Denny Popan. Dumps one off in front. Gilbert got a poke out of Bossy. Gets a shot away. And Keynes quick with the glove, makes the save and holds it. Off the rebound, the puck comes back. It was rolling. That's the reason Bossy didn't get a good chunk of it. Here's Dennis Potvin shot to the net. Wondering why Curran, number 34, didn't use his hand. Look at Bossy with the puck bouncing. He tried to drill it, but the puck bounced up on the top of his stick. Didn't get much on it. Mike Bossy brought a 14-game point scoring streak into tonight's action. 
Greg Gilbert, it's knocked down. The puck comes back to Janssen, or to Pearson, rather, to Gilbert, back to Stephan, then over to Denny Potvin, and puts the bossy, and he just tipped it wide. It was on the heel of his stick when he shot it. Now Pearson keeps it in at the Boston line. Peterson dumps it out into center, and Potvin is back. 30 seconds gone in the out of their power play. Pearson back to Potvin, up the middle of the ice, away from Middleton's check, comes over the Bruin line. Takes it along the boards and drops it back to Bossy at the point. Bossy to Trache. Trache pulls the trigger. Keen's down to make the save. Gilbert gets a whack at it. Knocks away from him. Picks it up now. Gives it to Bossy. Mike Bossy takes a look. Drops it back to Potvin. Into the corner to Greg Gilbert. It's taken away from him and cleared. Potvin reaching up. Couldn't knock it down as Delphine has cleared it down the ice. Interesting that they use Peterson and... Middleton for most of the penalty killing. Now there's 50 seconds left on the penalty to Casper. That's when Pearson slapped one in off the glass that ended up in the mesh at the side of the net. Rested there, and they dig it off now. As Keane signaled, the faceoff will come outside the blue line. Peterson and Middleton, a big threat offensively generally. Let's take a look at some of the action by the Islanders on a power play. Brian Trotche faked the shot. The defenseman dives down. Then he tried to pick the far left-hand corner. Good stop by Keynes as the puck is cleared away by Telveen in front of Keynes. Yeah, I've always wondered, uh, you know, to, to use up Middleton, who's not the youngest player on the team, in penalty-killing situations. Of course, I suppose if the Bruins were ahead by two or three goals rather than by one, then they opt not to do that. Quite like Lane, this stage in the game, yeah. Probably contributing factor. They watch LaFontaine bringing it into center ice for the Islanders, played it in off the left-wing boards. That's Gillies going in after it. Keens out of the net, plays it around to the near corner. Wayne Sutter knocked it down, gave it to Gillies. To the blue line, Boudelier shot just wide on the glove side. Got back to the point. Johnson gives it to Dwayne Sutter. To the blue line, to Boudelier. Into LaFontaine. Good stop. Oh, two of them by Keynes. First off, LaFontaine, and then he robs Gillies. Back to back, and it goes down the ice. Boudelier picks it up, and that does it. The penalty to Casper is over. Allenhurst for the breaking pass. Off Dwayne Sutter into the Bruins zone. Keynes clears it. It's picked up by Gillies. Fires one wide. Middleton reaching for it over on the right wing boards. Brings it back for the Bruins. Dumps it into the Islanders zone. In quickly is Greenhouse, and he shot it just wide. Comes to the side of the net, and into the net as the Bruins pick up a loose puck, and Craig Greenhouse beats Bill Smith from close in. The Bruins have a 3-1 to one lead. The looseness in their own end of the ice. We saw some of it in the first period, and here in the second period with the penalty just up. Let's take a look as Middleton battles Randy Boyd, and then Neenhouse grabs a loose puck, pulls it back, and pops it over the shoulder of Bill Smith. That puck kept in on a rush by Neenhouse. He kept it in as he knocked it behind the net. Then he takes it from Rick Middleton and pops it over the left shoulder into the top of the net, in behind Billy Smith. Quickly now, his 12th goal of the season, Neenhouse has made the score three to one. The Islanders down by a pair on home ice, and the Bruins step in again as Zimmer had his shot knocked down. Morrow being tied up in the play. Curry left it on the board. Zimmer got it to the point. Curran's shot just went wide. On Tonelli starts out. The Islanders move into center, three on two. Tonelli comes over the line. The pass cut through the skates of Flatley, and is brought back by Charlie Zimmer. Little Jim drew the only assist on that goal by Heenhouse. Three to one. Morrow back to the zone end of the ice. Got it up right wing out of the reach of Flatley, and the Bruins take over again. Donald got it to Crowder, who slapped it into the Islander zone. Here's Morrow on the right wing board. Got it into center ice. Tonelli too well covered. The puck went right to the goaltender, Keen. Right it off to Crowder. Crowder is up to the center. Potvin there to Bacala. Back to Denny Potvin. Up along the board. It's loose momentarily, and now Crowder shoots it into the Islander zone. Back is Morrow, starts out on the right side with a pass to Bossy. Ahead, Portinelli comes over the line, checked from behind, and the puck has been cleared into center ice. Peterson chases it. Bill Smith comes out of the net. Takes it around the end boards for Denny Clapham. Up the left side, misses everybody, is going the length of the ice, and will be called back as Kuzak puts a stick on it. It's a break of the action with just under 13 minutes to play in the second period. The score now, the Bruins three, the Islanders one. 
Boston can be a tough team when they get ahead. Only three teams in the league have given up more goals than the Boston Bruins. Philadelphia have given up 117, 118 by Washington, and the other team, well, Quebec Nordique, excuse me. That's how Kluzak ripped one from the right point. Now O'Connell let one go that was blocked by Brian Trotje. Trotje's pass tipped at center ice. Recovered by Courtnall over to Kluzak on this left side. And he shot it right to Potvin. Up to Trotje. Or Bruins around him, so he dumps it in. Going back is Courtnall. Then Trotje got tripped up. Play goes on. Bossy and Ford checking. The puck knocked loose by Greg Gilbert. Put it in Bossy's skates. O'Connell tying up Bossy. Gilbert gets a stick on it. Trying to go back to the net. Tied up there and knocked down by Courtnall. O'Connell and Bossy didn't separate. Here's Gilbert with it. Out in front to Trotje and it rolled over his stick. Ryan Trotje dumps it in back of the net. Bossy and O'Connell are still there together. Gilbert there for the Islanders as well. But Middleton picked up the puck. Here's checked by Trotje. Trying to get it to Bossy. Middleton and Bossy still back of the net. And finally, Bossy reaches into the corner to pick it up. Peterson moves over on him, knocking him down. Ryan Trotje takes it out of his gate. Plays it into the corner. Back of the net, Dean slaps it around the boards, but right to Potvin, into Gilbert. Back of the net to Bossy. Again, O'Connell knocks him down. Here's Trotje centering around in front, and Gilbert just played him off the skates of the goaltender, and out come the Bruins. Peterson drops it to Cortnall. Jeff Cortnall across the Islander line, and Biddick came over to knock it away from him. Darryl Biddick dumps it into center, but it's getting right back into the Islander zone. Potvin in after it. Tries the right wing with a pass for Bob Nystrom. Trotje back to Nystrom. Into the Boston zone. Nystrom trying to get it around the check. The puck goes loose. They're behind the net by Bork. And brought up the right side by Steve Casper. Got it around. The defenseman, in this case, Boudelier, it ended up in the Boston bench over on the far side. So there's a break here at the Nassau Coliseum. Just over 11 minutes remaining in the second period. The Bruins lead 3-1. And Greg Gilbert trying to get things stirred up for the Islanders. They're all over the Boston Bruins. Watch Gilbert as he tries to convert and almost does a Brian Trotche pass. He ends up in the net, not the puck. Bob Bourne centers for John Tonelli and Bob Nystrom. There's on and Brutalier on defense for the Islanders as Bourne shoots it around the boards to the Boston end. Left it there for Bork, up the middle with a breaking pass off Casper. Right down to Bill Smith, who has it in the catching glove and holds it, touches the glove against Casper, and that stops the play. That's a play the Islanders used to use a great deal, particularly when Butch Goring was an Islander. Dennis Potvin, time and again, used to stop behind the net. Goring would use that as the key to signal, and he'd break up the middle. There he is now in a suit in his civvies, but when he was in the Islander uniform, he used to use that play that Casper was just trying to convert from... Ray Bork, right up the middle, a nice quick pass from Dennis Potvin, and time and again, he'd break away. Bruins got the draw off the scene to Bork, over to this left side, to lean shot, went off the catching glove of Bill Smith. Ends up back in the net, Bourne took the man, Boudelier came in, couldn't pick up the puck. Ends up in the near corner, Pearson moves over. Collision in the Islander zone, and the Bruins come up with it again. Passine dumped it off to Bork. Ray Bork holds it, centers it across in front, nobody there for the Bruins, and John Tonelli plays it ahead to Bourne. His check right at the Islander line. And they have to send that Stephen Pearson in to pick it up. Greg Neenow steps into him, a centering pass got loose in front of the net and has been cleared by the New York Islanders. The scene cut through, feet were cut out from under him, and the Islanders have iced the puck. They're nearing the midway point of the second period, and the Islanders are down by a pair of goals. Brian Curran, the tough guy, of one of the tough guys of the Boston Bruins, but a moment ago, Pacine, Dave Pacine, looking for a pass, almost had it. Let's take a look at some of the action as the Bruins bring it back into the Islanders end of the ice. Here's a shot. Billy Smith, look at the look at that. He's got a good look at it. There's the shot. It's rising. It's a hard shot. Smith coming up in motion. Had good timing on it. Got a piece of it. Sending it high up into the corner of the rink. 16,169 on hand here at the Nassau Coliseum tonight. Watching the Islanders and the Bruins. Bruins battling for a puck along the boards in the Islanders zone. Rajay took it away from Charlie Sever. 
right side off the skates of LaFonte, but the pass was over two lines, and that's offside. Something the Bruins aren't afraid to do either in the offensive zone is to flood it. Philadelphia for years has been doing that. They'll send all three players into the corner of the rink trying to come up with the puck. Tomorrow at 7.30, the Nets fly into Boston to take on Larry Bird in the Boston Celtics. And on Saturday at 10.30, the Nets are back home in a big matchup with the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Nets and, and Boston tomorrow at 7.30, and the Nets and the Cavaliers Saturday at 10.30 right here on Sports Channel, number one in New York sports. He just scored the opening goal of the game tonight. Has rattled it around the boards in the Islanders zone. It was cleared from the front of the net by LaFontaine. He and Morrow got crossed up a little, but they managed to jump it into center ice. Bird made it to the right side. Tovine has dumped it into the Islanders zone again. That board is Morrow around the boards. Intended for Gillies. It went right to Crowder instead. Has gone on the short side. Blocked by Smith. And it comes right out in front. But Lane Sutter is there to pick it up. Sutter dumps it into the Boston zone. That's Gillies going it after. Keane fires it away from him. Thus no whistle. And the Bruins cleared to the line where it hit Potvin and came back in offside. Charlie Zimmer that time trying to bring the puck from the back of the net. What he was really trying to do, he knew he couldn't get all the way out in front. He tried to bank it off Billy Smith, either his pads, his skate, or his stick, and put it in the net. Puck came rolling across in front as you take a close look at Gerald Diddick. Some of the hopes of the Islanders' defensive core riding on how Gerald Diddick improves in his second year in the National Hockey League. The opening game of the season did not play again until after he had been sent to Springfield for what I'm sure seemed like an eternity to Gerald. Especially when you come up as a youngster and you only play in the National Hockey League, you haven't tasted the minors. The Islanders moving in, but Bacala couldn't get the pass to Flatley here on right wing, and Courtnall has dumped it around the boards at the Boston end. That's Potvin stepping in front of Middleton, gave it to Janelli. Janelli and Kuzak battled for it on the board. Janelli kicked it around the right wing, and Middleton's clearing effort hit Bacala. That knocked down, Flatley taken to the ice by Peterson's check, and O'Connell clears it to center. Courtnall gave it to Peterson, who's dumped it in wide of the net. Bill Smith plays it to the left wing for Janelli. Flatley across to the right side. Flatley moves up the wing. Trying to get in around Kluzak in the Boston end. Left the puck on the boards, and Courtnall has cleared it up to center for Peterson. Ian Middleton into the Islander zone. The pass to Middleton. Left it for O'Connell. He fires one that's blocked in front by Potvin. Nico Bacala starts out. Bacala working on Talene. Fires it. It goes off Talene's stick and into the seats. There's a break in the action with 8 minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the second period. The Boston Bruins lead the New York Islanders 3-1. Man that broke Bobby Orr's record also plays defense. Here, look at the shot by O'Connell. Dennis Potvin looking like a goaltender, timing it perfectly. Goes down and makes the save. Got a look at the puck up on the board. Dropped over on the far side and cleared down into the outer zone. Thomas Johnson goes back. Who set up the Islanders' only goal of the game makes the play across off Randy Boyd and held in on this left side. Neenhouse with a shot. Good glove save by Bill Smith as Neenhouse ripped one, although being tied up by Yatsen. Randy Boyd takes it back to the net. Back to the left side to the pass to Gilbert, up the boards to Trotje. And Trotje across to Thomas Yatsen. He's into the Boston zone. Yatsen pulls inside the defense and shot one that was deflected high into the seats behind the Boston goal. Something the Boston Bruins have been doing, and they've been doing it successfully in this hockey game. They're sending the defenseman down the boards. A moment ago, Ray Bork charging down the boards, breaking up the Islanders. One of the things that's hardest, the hardest thing for a forward to do is pick up the puck in his own end of the ice. There's Neenhouse's the shot a moment ago. Bill Smith picked it off and shot it up around the boards. And it was from that point. There's Neenhouse again as he off balance gets a good shot away. Bill Smith gracefully picks it off, kept the play in motion. Now, Boudelier fires from off left wing. It was blocked at the defense and kicked behind the Boston net. Charlie Simmer has it here on the left side. Worked it around to the right wing to Crowder. The pass right to Burridge. Comes in with a shot. Smith makes the save. LaFontaine reached for the rebound, but it was banged right on by Curran. And Smith, apparently, the referee thought he had hold of it. He did not. He had played it off to Dwayne Sutter, but the whistle has sounded, and the result is a face-off to the out of the end of the ice. Young referees get caught some times. Dan Morelli getting caught that time, anticipating that Smith was going to hang on to the puck. Smith had lots of room and lots of time. He doesn't hang on to it unless he has to. He unloaded it just as the whistle was coming to the lips of the referee, and he blew it. Fontaine facing off with Randy Burridge. 
Huff ends up in a pileup, comes out of that pileup, and back to Curran. Curran moves in deep, lets it go through a screen, and it just went wide of the net. Benny Morrow reaches in to knock it around the boards for Bob Bourne. Bourne down the left side, has Dwayne Center moving up with him across the Boston line. Bourne made the play for the Fontaine, and his backhander went wide of the net. Here are the Bruins starting up. Levine down the left side. Levine across the line to Simmer. Dropped it back. Crowder moves in. Puff and chips in beautifully. And Blaine Sutter has cleared it out for the Islanders. Or Kluzak waits for his teammates to get back in. Then was checked. And it goes into the timekeeper's bench right beneath us. There's a break in the action now with 6 minutes and 45 seconds left in the second period. And the Bruins continuing to lead 3-1. to one. Delveen, a good skating defenseman. Let's see here. He comes across the line. Here's the shot. Watch Dennis Potvin a moment ago. You saw him break up a play with a timely block. That time he plays the body, takes the player away, gets the puck. Trache, Bossy, and Gilbert, the Islander forwards. There's on a pop out on defense. Up hand pass. Off the stick on the right wing, and Bossy has shot it into the Boston zone. Trache unable to center it as O'Connell came up with a big play for the Bruins into the Islander zone. Popan took the puck away from him and has dumped it into center right. It's Kluzak here on the left side of the Boston defense. Played it off Portnall into the Islander zone and Popan over to give it to Bossy to Gilbert. Off his pick to Trotje. And Trotje dumps it wide of the Boston goal. Doug Dean is handling it back of the net. Plays it high along the glass. It'll be picked up by Portnall. Jeff Portnall. Over to Peterson, cruising down right wing. Middleton went to the front of the net. The puck didn't arrive as Trache picked it off and has given it to Greg Gilbert. With it, shooting it in. The Islanders go for a player change as Keane speed it up. Out to the left side for Cortnall. Ahead to Peterson. Slowed up by Cinelli's check. Cortnall trailing the play. Cinelli lost it in the skate. Cortnall to Peterson. Better it across. Fort with a shot that missed the net. Ends up in the corner. Dotson ties up the man. Coming up with the puck is Miko Makula. A couple getting out of the zone end of the ice. Makula works it off the boards to Flatley. Up to John Tonelli. Back to Johnson who was moving up. Johnson over the Boston line. Left the puck for Randy Boyd. Comes in with a shot that tipped just wide of the net. Tonelli goes after it at the side of the net. Tonelli got it to Flatley. In front to John Tonelli. And it was knocked away from him. Bork slaps it around the boards in his own end. Bortal and Johnson collide. The puck comes out to center ice. Picking it up is Dave Fasin. He is checked in the Islanders zone. And here's Nico Makula, tripped up by Cortnall. Play goes on. Casper brings it into the Islanders zone. Boyd takes him on the boards. The puck comes out over the line. Shot back in under the late offside that's cleared now. Patrick Flatley is over the line. Takes a hit. Johnson had trouble picking up the puck. And Fasin for Boston just clears it out into center right. Flatley pulls away from Casper. Turns and lost it. Picks it up again. Patrick Flatley over the line. Heavy checking by the Bruins as Flatley dumped it to the corner for Torelli. Bork tight on top of him. Battling court is Fasin and he finally clears it into the center right zone. Biddick back, being chased by Neenhouse. Biddick dumped it upside the line. It's recovered there by Dwayne Sutter. Sutter has to wait. Bork and Greg Tonelli down to the ice. Back at the Boston end. The Islanders did not penetrate. Fontaine gives it to Dwayne Sutter. Sutter into the Boston zone. The pass was blocked. And down the ice comes Randy Burry. Burry into the Boston, the Islanders zone. Gave it to Crowder across to the right side for Neenhouse. But the center one that's cleared aside by Smith. With four minutes remaining in the second period, Boudelier dumps it into the far corner out of the reach of Dittick. Randy Burry will be 20 next week. Up the puck in deeper for the Bruins. There's Paul Boudelier playing it around to Dwayne Sutter. Sutter up to Pat LaFontaine. Ian Gillies crossed the center ice line. Gillies took the pass, tried to set up LaFontaine, and he was slowed up from behind. Collided with Keynes, knocking the stick out of his hands, but the batter's not as the Bruins have dumped it down the ice and will be called for having iced the puck with three minutes and 35 seconds left in the second period. A couple of Islanders that have worked well together each time they played, Pat LaFontaine and Clark Gillies. That time, a good defensive move by the Bruins. Takes a scoring attempt away. Here's the pass. Clark Gillies, a beauty. There's LaFontaine being checked from behind by Charlie Simmer. Good defensive move. Excuse me, that is not. That's Brian Kern, the defenseman who has caught up the ice. Kern got back quickly to take a scoring attempt away from Pat LaFontaine. Now the Islanders sending out Trottier, Gilbert, and Bossy with Pearson and Popat on defense. Gary Peterson, you see him lining up his most of last season with that shoulder operation. Assist. Back to play and play very well for the Bruins. 
O'Connell tries the left side. Off the board for Courtnall. Back into Kruzak and a bounce over to the stick. So Keynes comes out to give it to O'Connell. O'Connell directs some traffic. Pops it up the right wing boards. Out into center ice. Potan has it. Gave it to Gilbert. To Bossy. Late offside is called now as the Islanders started into the Boston end, but without the buck, and we're down to the final three minutes and 11 seconds of the second period with this break in the action. The Bruins lead three to one. Buck dropped and cleared back into the Boston zone following the faceoff. Muzak comes out of there with it. And out of skating room as Pache cut him off and then dumped it in just out of the reach of Fossey. Plays it around the corner boards. It hit Trotje. Peterson is there to clear it, but right to the stick of Bossy. Put it out in front. Gilbert couldn't get a whack at it. Comes back to Potvin, and his shot hits Middleton and bounces into center right. Portnow back to Middleton. Works his way in on Pearson and checked him neatly. Pearson lost the puck. Peterson's drive is blocked by Smith. Middleton trying to come out of the corner is pass deflected by Pearson. And Gilbert has cleared it to the center ice zone and now back into the Boston end. Pretty good exchange, some pretty good goaltending, some pretty good defensive move after some big mistakes by the Islanders. Now the puck clears down into the Islanders' zone. Yes, they lose again in their own end of the ice, but this time did not have to pay the price. Ron Nystrom got it into the Boston zone. Lee here on the right side, jumped into the center ice. Morrow for the Islanders, moves up, got it to Gillies. He's checked right at the Boston line. Gillies with it again, can't make the play, however. Steve Casper, tied up by Bourne. Through the battle for it, right in front of the Boston bench, and now have frozen it long enough for a face-off. Pace has stayed in the hockey game. Both teams working diligently. A minute and 58 seconds left in the second period. Back-to-back -back goals, Courtnall and Neenhaus. Let's take a look at some of that exchange. Good play by Stefan Pearson as he plays the puck and the body. Then he misfired on the puck. There's the shot by Peterson. What a stop by Billy Smith. Another loose puck in the Islanders' end of the ice. Bill Smith fails his teammate out. Hey, Bourne dumped it in. Gillies tips it out into the center ice area. And Bourne started up after it. Went to the wing. Gillies double teamed there by Pacine and Casper. So they'll hold it for a face-off. Not a whole lot of difference between the two teams since the last time they met. The Islanders have played 19 games, picked up 19 points. The Bruins have played 17 games. And with the result, 17 points. Just about even Steven as far as what's gone on since the 21st of November. 500 hockey. People look at teams like the Boston Bruins and the New York Islanders and think of better than that. They think of close to 600 hockey when you're talking about the two teams playing each other tonight. The Islanders struggled through the month of December, really. Five wins, five losses, and four ties, and just got to the 500 mark for the month with that New Year's Eve win in overtime at Detroit. They're down three to one on home ice as Trotche got the pass to Flatley, is shot right on, Keens the save, and it comes off the glass. Flatley gets it into Brian Trotche. The point, Randy Boyd lets it go. That's kicked out by Keens as he slid across to the right. Randy Burridge clears it out to center, down into the Islander zone. Facing it is Thomas Johnson. Out there before it went far enough for icing. Boyd is checked on the far wing. Got cleared around behind the net. Going back for it is Patrick Flatley. Flatley dumps it out into the center right zone. Less than a minute to go in the second period. It comes off the boards and Caldine picks it up. Almost lost it to Tonelli. Caldine now across to Portnoy. This is Curran. Moving it into the Avenue zone. Facing it is Betty Pearson. On right side for Miko Makula. Makula comes over center ice, pushes it into the Boston zone, then got taken down. Ray Fork picks it up back in the net, fed it up to Barry Peterson. Peterson, Cortnall, and Middleton come to center. That's Middleton into the Islanders zone on the backhand. Left the trailer pass to Cortnall, who rounds the net. Tried to poke it in the short side, it ends up in the corner. Jeff Cortnall with it again. Center is there's Middleton waiting. Takes a look, father from behind, and knocked down by Potvin. Cortnall trying to come off the board. Pearson puts the grips on him, and the puck went into the corner a little deeper. Potvin has it now. Potvin around to Bossy, pulled it away from Tulane, and went right to Peterson, and a shot kicked up by Smith. Bossy goes after it. Left it for Potvin, and that's going to do it for the second period. It's all Boston as far as the score sheet is concerned. The game 
game was tied 1-1 at the end of the first period, but the Bruins strike for two by the six-minute mark of the second period. From there, neither team can put the puck in the net again. Butch Goring watching as his team waits at the players' bench while the Islanders vacate the ice surface and has to be much pleased with what he has seen to this point. His team has had trouble winning on the road. They've had only one win in their last 13 road games coming into the Nassau Coliseum. But over two periods, they lead the New York Islanders. Your scores, the Bruins three, the Islanders one. We'll have a recap of that second period action right after these messages. Dan Fischel here at Nassau Coliseum. Three to one, the Bruins over the Islanders at the end of the second period. And my guest is Valerie Potvin, who was behind the scenes in the planning of the great show for your husband. Tell us how much you knew and how involved you were and how you kept it from Denny. Well, I knew everything, and it was the hardest keep secret to keep. <laughs> we had to hide everything from him. The plans of bringing his mother down and his brother and all his friends. And, you know, they're all staying at our house, and I had to hide all the groceries today so he wouldn't know that anybody was coming. And It's just hard to keep a secret. Denny was saying at the end of the first period that uh, when he looked around for you, he, uh, he thought you were late didn't know uh, you when did they put you in the car and uh, to get you out on the ice just a few minutes before I went out on the ice and I didn't I didn't know about the car actually you didn't No, that was a big surprise now you met Denny at a party you uh, did a lot of modeling in uh, Europe you were based in London you didn't know anything about hockey anything about the Islanders did you know that Denny was a hockey player I was told he was a hockey player at the party but I'd never heard of Dennis Potvin or the Islanders at that point and you've had a very successful modeling career. Now now you've made the transition. You have a uh, daughter, Madeline. She's yes. about five months yes. old. Have you given up modeling? Yes, I have. Why? Completely. Well, I want to devote my time to my husband and my family, my little girl. You know, it's a full-time occupation. There really isn't any time for, to do anything else. How much do you miss your career? Uh, sometimes I do miss it, but I'm just so involved with what I'm doing now. It's a good part of my life, and you know, I remember it with, with fond memories. One of the highlights of the presentation was uh, the presentation of an automobile. And they pointed out that your husband, Denny, is a great fisherman. What about yourself? Do you go fishing with him? Yes, I do. We love to go fishing. And who is the better fisher person? Dennis is a much better fisher person <laughs> than I am, but I'm luckier. <laughs> <laughs> when you got involved uh, with Denny, and you began coming to hockey. What did you, how did you feel about the game? I felt it was very exciting, but very violent. And that's something that I find still difficult to get used to. Do you get emotional at the games? I get frightened sometimes. Yeah. A little bit frightened. Yeah. Of what? Yeah. Somebody might get hurt. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you worry about him when he's on the ice? I mean, do you focus on him more than the other players? Yes, of course. Yeah. But I'm a good worrier. I can find a reason to worry about everything. <laughs> the, uh, the fans, some of the fans who I spoke to after the presentation wondered how choked up Denny was, you know, when he started to make the speech. He seemed to not flow. You were there. Tell us, what was really going on with him? I think he really was choked up. He had no idea what was happening. He didn't know his mother was here and that any of this was going to happen. And, he was at a loss for words. Now, when did you... It's rare for Dennis. <laughs> I know that uh, Jill Nee of the Islander staff orchestrated this. Now, when did you originally find out that his mother was going to come? Just about a, a week before we started planning everything. Jill called me at home and told me a little bit about what was going on, and we started planning from there. How long do you think he's going to play? You're going to have to ask him that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Valerie Potman. We'll have Jigs and Eddie right after this. Came this dish that looked like an ice cream sundae with whipped cream, cherries, sauce, you name it. They dig in. Something a little hard in there. A hockey puck. Hockey pucks for dessert. Nice job, Mickey, getting your buddies like that. 
Islanders have to get something early to get back into this hockey game. They're trailing 3-1 to one as the third period gets underway, and the Bruins back into their own end of the ice. And Matt Pelleen with the puck has dumped it into center ice. Johnson gave it to Gillies. With Wayne Sutter onto the left side. LaFontaine with it after. Backhanded it wide with Doug Keane. Keane plays it around the boards. Cortnell comes up the left side, but Boyd moves over to knock it away from him. Got it into the skates of Johnson. It turns. Plays it to the right side. There's Wayne Sutter with a shot that just missed the net. Mark Gillies dumps one off back of the net. In and out of the skates of Wayne Sutter. Colleen tied him up, but Gillies was there. Tried to set up LaFontaine at the side of the net. Peterson broke up that play, and Cortnell comes to Sutter. Left it at the Islander blue line. This is LaFontaine turning over to Denny Cotter. Cotter fires it to the right side. Gilbert goes in after it. Works it around the board. Keens out of the net. Left it for Ray Fort. On to Charlie Simmer. Simmer's pass goes to Crowder. Bounced off his stick. Picked it up and shot it wide. Here's Gerson now for the Islanders. Mike Bossy, Brian Trottier. Bossy trailing. Picks up the pass at center. Dumps it into the Boston zone. Keens drops it back to the net and Kuzak clears it. Charlie Simmer takes over in the far corner. Simmer's pass through the skates of O'Connell comes to right wing for Crowder. Crowder moving into the Islanders zone. Takes it to the left wing board. And Trottier rides him into the corner. Crowder dug it loose for Simmer. A good in center. Pearson on top of him. Andy Burridge gets bumped in the Islander end of the ice. And up comes Potvin. A breaking pass out of the reach of Bossy. Went right to Keynes in the Boston goal mount. And to Curran. Backhands it off the boards. And Simmer relays it. It comes back in over the line, however. And O'Connell cleared it out. Connor. He just puts it high in the air, and we watch the Islanders free group. Oh, Paul Boudelier. Boudelier rushes the puck into center ice and shot it wide of Keynes. Flatly and after gets a shot away, and it was deflected wide of the net. Keynes dumps it into the corner. Morrow goes racing and after it. His efforts to get there succeeded, but the puck had been knocked away, and the Islanders trying to hold it in at the blue line. Kid Flatly gets checked here in the near wing, and the Bruins come to center ice. Neenhouse dumping it in. John Tonelli and Neenhouse went after it. Moves back to the net. Tonelli forces Neenhouse wide. Then he dropped one toward the net. Was blocked. Here's Boudelier. The left wing boards out of the reach of Tonelli. The Bruins cuts the blast. There will be no icing. Levine back. Finds the right side with a pass to Passine. To Crowder. To Casper, rather. The shot drifted wide. to Joe's best catching glove. The Bruins. Trouble picking it up in the Islanders zone. Levine is checked. And here's Greg Gilbert starting out. Gilbert comes over, center ice. Into the Boston ball. Neat move to get around Bork, but then couldn't catch up with the puck. It comes back to Randy Boyd. Boyd gives it to Bourne. Bob Bourne with a drive. Deflected in front of the net at the defense, and then Gilbert is knocked down. There'll be a holding penalty against the Boston Bruins. The Islanders go to the power play. Three minutes and five seconds gone in the third period. A break in the action with the Bruins leading three to one. Early pressure by the Islanders as the Boston Bruins into their own end of the ice. There's a shot. Look at Bob Nystrom, number 23. Look at him limping. That shot by Bob Bourne hit him in the back of the leg as Ray Bork takes down Greg Gilbert, gets a penalty. The Islanders trailing by two get a power play. Bruins third, but not out. Potvin having knocked it down at the line. Fires one. He scores! Potvin on his night. It may have been kicked in front of the deflection, but it was the captain who let it go on the power play. Opportunity on the power play. He whipped a hard shot. There it goes. That changed direction. Now, whether Brian Trache tipped it or whether it hit the Bruin defenseman, Hotband got a good rip at it. That could have hit Caldine and deflected in behind Keynes, but the Islanders have come within one now. It's three to two. We'll say now that it's Dennis Hotband's until we're corrected. And if it stands, he'll be only two goals shy of Bobby Orr's record in that area. Of course, he's already smashed Orr's record as the highest scoring defenseman in the history of the National Hockey League. And for that, he was honored here tonight. Here's the announcement coming. It's Brian Crutchier being credited with the goal. And he continues to trail Bobby Orr by three. 
There is Mike Rossi approaching the 500 goal mark, coming down the right side for the Islanders. The pass through to Tache in the backhand. He shoots. Keynes makes the save. Tache with the rebound. Check back to the net. Good job by the Bruins, number 18, Keith Crowder. Now Crowder clears it, but right to Bossy and cut to Tache. And Keynes, gambling, reached out and knocked it away from Brian Tache. Bruins have shot at the length of the ice. It will be called here. Tache with his 16th goal of the season. 3-11 gets the Islanders closer. It's a power play goal. Good opportunity. More pressure by the Islanders. They come right back. The Bruins trying to get out of their own end of the ice. Let's take another look at the goal score. Dennis Montman rips the puck. Brian Trotchy, there he is turning in front of the net. He wants to get a look at it. He wants to get his stick down. And as the puck comes charging through, he puts the stick down and just changes the direction enough to put it inside the right goal post, making the score 3-2. Fontaine is at center ice for the Islanders. Clark Gillies on left wing. Wayne Sutter on the right. Fontaine won the draw. The puck has been cleared to the board. Bruins flip it high at the blue line. Potan knocked it down. LaFontaine dumps it in deeper. Ray Bork couldn't pick it up. Wayne Sutter has given it to Clark Gillies. Comes to the side of the Boston net and went behind it. Put it right through in front of the net. In comes Potan. Let's get back to the goal, but Bork was there in time to pick it up. He passed into the center ice zone off Wayne Sutter, recovered by Middleton. Across to the left wing, Portnall in deep, and he shot it wide. Ray Bork, center, and in off the left side at least, then got checked. And Mark Gillies taking over for the Islanders, wheels it across to Pearson. Pearson out to Pat LaFontaine, and went off his stick, and Bork backhands it into the Islanders zone, where Potvin plays it across to Wayne Sutter. Back to Pearson. From Pearson to Popan here on the left side. Middleton moves up on him. Popan has given it to Pearson. Up the center to Gilly. Got it back into his own zone. It's taken by Pearson to Popan. Popan finds an opening, plays it to the right side. Flatley runs into Casper at the Boston line. And up come the Bruins. Portnall sends Casper over the line. Drop pass. Portnall in the backhand. And his pass intercepted and cleared by Tonelli. John Tonelli plays it to the right side for Flatley. Drops it in right on target. Keen steering it aside for O'Connell. Michael Connell dumps it into the center ice zone. Little Ear has to hustle back for the Islanders. All Little Ear plays it around to the right side to Flatley. He's checked by Kluzak as the Bruins defense pinches in. Comes to the right side for Keane. Plays one back of the net. Shuttering attempt is deflected from through and cut down. Cleared by Boudelier. Ear. Cassine gets a stick on it. Cassine trying to find Neenhouse in front of the net. Boudelier Ear tied up Cassine. Neenhouse goes in after. Got knocked down. And John Tonelli starts out with the puck. Three Bruins get back. Tonelli comes over center ice. Cuts to the right. Into the Boston zone. Tonelli finds some room. Shoots. He scores! him go to his right. Right here. Bang. Pat LaFontaine runs into Kluzak and on comes John Tonelli and he rips the shot into the far side. End to end rush as John Tonelli gets things motoring through the center ice area and in front of Kluzak he takes a turn. Kluzak gets taken out of the play. That allows John Tonelli to get in close enough to put the puck in the net. His second goal of the game his 13th of the season. Keynes is being taken out of the hockey game. No, it's a timeout, I guess, is what's happening. Timeout called by the Bruins. Butch upset with the officiating. Is team very upset, screaming at them? So we'll step out here for a while as well. The score now for this break is the Islanders 3, the Bruins 3. Butch Goring visibly upset with the non-call. I think what he's talking about is a non-interference call on Kluzak as Tonelli kind of went out around the outside. A pickoff play you'll see in basketball. Now the Bruins, after having taken the lead earlier, forced into a tie, moved in with a good scoring opportunity that was broken up by Bill Smith as he stepped in front of Fazine. Bob Bourne can't get out of there. Calvin off the right side, fires one glove save by Bill Smith, and Gillies has the rebound. Loops it around to the right wing boards. Bob Nystrom picks it off the boards and gets away from the check. Cut over the line with a pass to Gillies. Mark Gillies into the Boston zone. The puck rolling on him. Calvin back in time to.
to clear it into center ice, and Denny Potvin has it there. Potvin over to Pearson, loops it in around the boards. It's skipped away from the stick of Doug Gaines, and Bossy works it back in the net. Ryan Kern picking it up, couldn't play it out. Gilbert gets stripped up by Zimmer. Rache digs it off the boards, got it back to Pearson at the point. This fired on it. It stays in the Boston zone, recovered by Trache. Ryan Trache chased to the corner with Passim. The Bruins able to knock it loose as Casper starts out. Steve Casper down the left side, shoots it into the Islander zone. Stefan Pearson hustles back. In comes Charlie Zimmer to get a piece of Pearson. The puck comes back to the point. Buried with a shot. That will not break Gilbert. Comes loose for Denny Potvin. Potvin brings the Islanders into center ice. Over the Boston line, Potvin holding the puck, and a shot is deflected high and wide. Ray Bork digs it out of the right wing corner and backhands it outside the Boston line. Up comes Simmer. Steps into the Islander zone. Gave it to Crowder over on the wing. Back to Simmer and Potvin reaching in front. Broke up the play. Potvin playing the puck is going to get the gate for Trippy. There's a break here with... Oh, wait a minute. Charlie Simmer ends up in the net, falling over Billy Smith. Dennis Potvin took the feet out from underneath Simmer as the Bruins closing in, trying to unlock the deadlock or the tie. I guess it's not a deadlock. It's a tie. There's the original play. There's Simmer. He got his feet pulled out from underneath him by Potvin. He carried it straight ahead into Bill Smith. Couldn't control himself. Lost his balance. Dennis Potvin gets his second penalty of the hockey game. Either tripping or interference. It's a tripping penalty, excuse me, at 7.42. The Boston Bruins, who have seen the Islanders, Trotje and John Tonelli, tie the score at three apiece, will get a power play opportunity. See the story, 0 for 2 with the man advantage tonight, the Boston record. Ray Bork dumps it into the corner. There's Rick Middleton playing it in front, and Cortnall couldn't get a stick on it. Cortnall stripped of the puck by Trotje. Couldn't clear it out as O'Connell knocked it down. Here's Cortnall on the wing. Trotje chases him back a little further. O'Connell digs it loose. Middleton had it, lost it. Cortnall gets stripped up as he played it to the left point. Ray Bork turns, gives it to O'Connell. Trotje knocked it away. O'Connell recovers. That's in. Takes a look. Nobody moving for Boston. It goes back to Bork. His long shot skips just wide of the net. Rick Middleton with it now. Middleton left it for Peterson. Walks out of the corner. Centers Cortnall had it in the skates. O'Connell with a shot. He scores! Mike O'Connell on the power play. Mike O'Connell, he started the play back in his right point position. He carried the puck across in front of Ray Bork. And from there, the Islanders won out of position. There's O'Connell finishing the play right between the legs of Billy Smith. Regaining a one-goal lead from the side of the net. Good opportunity as the puck comes across. There's the shot by O'Connell, his third goal of the season. Mike O'Connell giving the Bruins a one-goal lead. So the penalty to Potvin costs. And the Bruins are up 4-3. to three. The Islanders dump the puck out of their own end. Chasing it back for the Boston Bruins, Michael Talvin. Boston goal is here on the right wing boards. Talvin recovers in time. Got it into the Islanders zone. Andy Boyd cleared that, but right to Keith Crowder. Crowder, a wraparound pass to Simmer. Number 10. Out in front off Murray to stick, and a collision knocks back to the ice, and will get a penalty for interference against Keith Crowder of Boston. So the Islanders are going to go to the power play with a break here. The score now, the Bruins four, the New York Islanders three. Scoring. If he wants to get mad, he should get mad at Keith Crowder. He takes an interference penalty in the offensive zone. Right here, Crowder moving in in front of the net. Pulls the feet out from underneath. The Islander defenseman gets a penalty for interference in the offensive zone. 11.07 remaining, and the Bruins have a one-goal lead. The Islanders are on a power play. Rache, Cinelli, and Bossy up front. Pairs on a pot then on defense, and it's Bossy starting out with the puck. The Bruins got all four men back quickly. So Bossy forced to dump it in, and Keynes plays it around the boards, but right to Bossy. Centered it in front. It cuts away from Potvin. It's up the right side, controlled now by Ray Bork. Bork into the Islanders' zone, trying to cut around Pearson. Stop, centers. The puck bounces into the far corner. Pache being tied up by Talin. And there is John Tonelli starting up. Carries it over center ice and shoots it in. It skips around the boards and got away from Keynes. Rache in after it. Rick Middleton took it away from him and has cleared it high and down into the Islander zone. 
Hoffman will pick it up there. 45 seconds gone in the bad advantage for the Islanders. And four Bruins back at their blue line. LaFontaine can't get over the line. Middleton cleared it. Got away from Potvin, who recovers now and gives it to Thomas Johnson. Johnson down the right side into the Boston zone. Plays it around behind the net. Keynes forced out of the goal. He's able to get some help, and the Bruins again force the Islanders to chase the puck. This time it's Boudelier turning in front of the net. All Boudelier over the center ice strike. Carries it across the Boston line. Made the play to the right wing boards. Gillies in after it. Mark Gillies feeds the point. That's Boudelier. Let's the shot go, and it's blocked in front of the net. LaFontaine trying to kick it away from the check. He was grabbed. Now gets control of the puck. LaFontaine looks for somebody, gave it to Boudelier at the point, slaps it high around the glass to Gillies waiting back of the net. Curran moves in on him, it's centered back by Bossy, and a diving Johnson is able to hold it in at the blue line. Into the corner, Curran and Gillies collide. Ryan Curran handed the puck to Pat LaFontaine to the point to Boudelier. Goes to the right, fired one that hit O'Connell, and it comes outside the blue line do it for the Allender power play. They're unable to get back into the Boston zone and can't get into a tie with the man advantage. Burridge moving in is checked. All Boudelier feeds it across to the right side. Pat LaFontaine holds on to it. Now gives it to Janssen up the middle of the ice. There's an Islander down in the Boston zone as Dwayne Sutter has been sent flying. And the Islanders have to regroup at center ice. Potvin plays it to the right side. Nobody there in a white uniform at least. Rick Middleton was there and has shot it into the Islander zone. Smith leaves it Back of the net for Denny Potvin. Potvin up to Miko Makala. Makala's pass goes to Dwayne Sutter. It's picked up again by Makala. The return pass intercepted by Courtnall. Jeff Courtnall carries it into the Boston zone. Has given it to Bork. On the left side, Courtnall moves up quickly. He's checked at the Islander blue line. And Pearson swung it loose. Gilbert couldn't get started, however. And Bork has cleared it high around the glass in the Islander zone. It's picked up by Potvin. Right side to Dwayne Sutter. Sutter, a long breaking pass off the boards. Gilbert chases it, but Bork got back in time. Bruins come to center ice. Bork now steps in over the line on the right wing. Shoots one, trips the glove save, and he'll hold it for a face-off. They have eight minutes and one second, uh, one second remaining in the third period. And the break of the action with the score, Boston four and the Avengers three. This is the last Boston Bruin to win the Calder Cup after Ray Bork, or before, I should say. As Oh, you got me off here completely. After Ray Bork? No, no, before. They haven't had one since Bork, but before Ray Bork, you know who the last Bruin to win the Calder Trophy? Watching Bork, he gets a lot of ice time. Look out. Here's a chance for Trache coming right in on goal. He shoots, he scores! The Bruins play giveaway at their blue line, and Trache makes them pay the price. Talk about Calder Trophy winners. Ryan Trache regains the lead. The Bruins get crossed up right there. They lose it. Casper loses it. Kluzak gets caught up the ice. He tries to chop Brian Troche down, but Troche and an awkward-looking Keynes. Watch Keynes. Kind of went for the fake. Got himself in an awkward position, and Brian Troche slides it along the ice underneath the outstretched right arm of Doug Keynes, and the Islanders have tied it up at four apiece. A goal at the 12-11 mark. Second of this night. The T's are doing the job. Sinelli and Trutche with a pair. Here's a chance for Crowder with a backhander. Smith the save, and he holds it right up on top of the goal frame. Austin answering back in a hurry, and with a flurry, number 18, E. Crowder gets a pass from Ray Bork. He holds it away from Gilly. He gets a weak backhand shot away. Bill Smith, with an unobstructed view, makes the stop taking a chance away from Keith Crowder in the Boston Bruins after Brian Trotche with his 17th goal of the season. Tied it at four. Bob Bourne getting the only assist on that Islander goal, and we watch Tonelli clearing it into center, and a chance for Flatley got tripped up by Bork. There goes on, and the Bruins make a two-line pass. That's the reason for the play stoppage and gives the crowd. Obviously, a lot of Islander fans here at the Nassau Coliseum. Mr. Marinelli is hearing it from there exactly a deliberate call. Pretty tough for the referee to make that call a penalty. Clearly, Pat Flatley went down. It was in the center ice area, and he had a little help from the Bruin player. Now, Janssen gets it to Tonelli. His backhander is blocked by Bork, and Keith Crowder starts up. Crowder 
Got it a man up front. That was Zimmer who comes over the Islander line. Left it on the boards as Boyd took him out heavily. Andy Burridge dumps it back to the Islander net. Bill Smith playing it around the right wing for Flatley. Tips it just out of the reach of McAuliffe. Up comes Tonelli. Ian McAuliffe over the line. The pass to Mikko McAuliffe. Shoots. He scores! Look at the beautiful play by Tonelli, I believe, as he passed. So here's John Tonelli. He makes the play to Nico Makala. And the two-on-one converted with that shot into the top right-hand corner. Makala showing some accuracy with his shot as John Tonelli gets away from the Bruin forward. There's the pass. And Makala with a quick snapping wrist shot into the top right corner with his sixth goal of the season has given the, uh, the Islanders the lead for the first time. Alafontaine back in his own end has played it around the boards. The Bruins defenseman Kern kept it into Middleton right out in front. Nobody there for the Bruins. The Islanders come to center as Gillies and Wayne Sutter move up. Pass to LaFontaine went off his skates at the Boston line and in offside. So there is a break in the action. Six and a half minutes to play in the third period and your score now is the Islanders five, the Bruins four. He scored the overtime goal against Detroit on New Year's Eve and now he's given the Islanders a one goal lead here. Five to four, his sixth goal of the season, Nico Makala. His command of the game and his command of the English language improving all at the same time as he has scored some big goals. Dwayne Sutter gets checked in the Boston end. The Bruins had the puck away to Dwayne Sutter. Comes out in front, shoots off the goal post. It's slapped around the boards, held in by Ken Morrow. On the backhand, a shot steered out by Keynes, and Gillies has the rebound. To Dwayne Sutter to LaFontaine, he shoots that just missed the net. Gillies puts it off to the side of the goal, and Curran slaps it off the boards. The Bruins in trouble in their own end of the ice the length of the ice to get a whistle. Something the Islander fans have had not had a good look at in a long time is constant pressure by the Islanders as they pour it across the board, line after line, keeping Butch Goring and his team pinned in around Doug Keynes. Take a look at some of that pressure. Here's a shot off the goalpost as Dwayne Sutter makes a nice move. He comes out, turns, and then lets it go for the short side. The rising shot for the top right-hand corner, the spot that Nico Makala a moment ago gave the Islanders a one-goal lead with. This time he rung it off the goalpost. Now Makala following the face-off, got it back to Janssen, to Makala, trying to get away from the check, is tripped up, and the Bruins come to center ice. That's Keenhouse on the left side, shot it in over the line, Boyd cleared it out. Steve Casper backhands it in. Andy Boyd clears that out to center ice. Nassim waited, waited long enough to stay on side, and Casper goes in after it. He gets tied up with Randy Boyd. The puck comes loose. Back to the point of Bork letting one go. Smith the save. The rebound kicked loose in the nick of time. Here's Mikko Makala carrying it to center ice. Moves it into the Boston territory. Tonelli goes in after, catching Keane's way out of the goal mount. The Bruins able to play it up the right wing for Cassine. Keane shoots it into the Islander zone with Pearson. Knocked it out of the air. He now sits center ice. Shoots it right back in again. Five minutes and five seconds left in the third period. Brian Trotje has taken it from pot bag. Comes to center. Sends scoring over the line. He shoots. Keynes gets in front of that. Off Bourne deep in the Boston zone. Gets tangled up in the boards here with Randy Burridge. And will freeze it long enough for a face-off. You were testing me a little while back with that uh, question as to who the last Bruin before Ray Bort yeah. to win a Calder Trophy. And I the life of me. I, I, I really want to say Robert Gordon Orr, but I know it wasn't Bobby, and I can't come up with it. Eric Sanderson. Who? Derek Sanderson. Derek Sanderson won it, or won it the year before. Yeah. Derek was the last one. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Or won it in 66-67, and Sanderson in 67-68. There's a deflection in front of Keynes, and he's down to block the shot and hold on to it. I was thinking that Barry Peterson, I know he had a lot of votes, but it wasn't, a, wasn't quite enough to win it. And who else has been a contender, really, for the Bruins in the last few years? They were the last two Bruins since 
Ray Bork won it. Who beat you out for it? Let's see. Back then, about 129 <laughs> other players. Here's a chance for Bossy, trying to get it into Trotje. Up to the side of the net. Trotje's shot just went wide. Bradley put it off to the side of the goal. Picked up by Trotje. His backhander is blocked, and the Bruins start out. Burridge comes to center right. Golfs it around the boards in the Islanders' zone. Montan gets a bump. Zimmer gets the puck, and then is checked, and Brian Trotje has cleared it across to Bossy at center right. Mike Bossy pulls it the left wing. Moves in over the line, puts on the brakes. Fires one just off the tip of the glove. Uh, it came outside the line before he shot it back in. He and Charlie Simmer collided. And they'll face off outside the Boston line. Still on the line here tonight is number 22's individual scoring streak. Mike Bossy had gone 14 games with a point in each one. Eight goals and 12 assists for 20 points in the last 14. He's going to get it, Jake. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Bruins will pull the goaltender and he'll get either an assist or he'll get a goal. Do you do fortunes as well? When I have to. <laughs> Not well, but when I have to. That LaFontaine centering for Dwayne Sutter and Clark Gillies. And here are the Bruins coming to center. Gillies broke up the rush. That goes to Ken Morrow. Morrow backs it off the left wing board. Deep into the Boston zone. LaFontaine got dragged down by Curran as he went in after the puck. And the Bruins, the Nets off the moorings, too. They don't know it yet, but that's what's happened. He, he's going to put it back on if he can. And just as the Bruins were moving into the Islanders' zone, the whistle sounded. And we'll get a little delay here as the net is replaced. So with this break, three minutes and 46 seconds left in the third period. And the score is the Islanders' five, the Bruins' four. Fontaine goes for a rest. Net jumped off its moorings. You have to know it was not the Bruins goaltender that pulled it off. With the Bruins in possession of the puck and threatening Bill Smith in the Islander goal, they don't want a stoppage of play. That's why Keynes was trying to put it back on before anybody noticed, so it wouldn't stop the offensive action of his Bruins teammate. Now Peterson facing off against Strache. The draw comes back. Bork is tied up as flatly moved in on top of him. Strache trying to take it away from Corto. Fed it to Bork, his low shot, they score! Middleton crossing in front, may have forced it to change direction, but the Bruins have come back to tie it at 5-5. What looked like an easy shot from the point, Ray Bork didn't get much on it. Let's take a look as the Bruins battle along the boards. Cortnall back. There's the shot. It wasn't hard, but watch Middleton in front of the net. He has to change the direction. Yes, he did. As Bill Smith had to play the puck as it came off the stick of Ray Bork, Middleton changed the direction about eight feet in front of Bill Smith, and he's tied the game once again at five apiece. We've been watching the Islanders tie it up and then fall behind. The Islanders goal by McAuliffe gives them a 5-4 lead. Now Middleton has tied it for the Bruins. Andy Boyd dumping it in from center ice, but on his own side of the center ice stripe gets a play stoppage for icing the puck. Now the three minutes and 26 seconds left. The Islanders with four goals here in the third period. First time they've scored four goals in the third period of any game this season. A helpless feeling for the goaltender watching a puck come in. There's Cortnall as he banks it off the boards in front of Flatley. There's the shot. Now the shot is not hard. It's not coming fast, but Middleton, there he's coming out, dives and tips it by the right leg of Bill Smith into the net. A helpless feeling. Nothing he can do about it with the puck changing direction only eight feet in front of him. Couldn't make the save. Allender start out following the draw. Popan is carried into center. Played it to Flatley. Dumps it in. Out of the net, wheels it around the board. Popan stays in deep, picks it up, fires one that's reflected wide. It's in after it again. Back there by Port. Flatley moves in to help out. He's go back there, covering for Popan at the point, but the Bruins wheel it up the right side, and here's Portnall into the Islander zone. Portnall checked by Pearson. Two of them go to the corner. Pearson all over Portnall. Back right up in the board, just kick loose. He's go back to Get it to Flatley, back to Macklin. Down the right side, he's brought up by Tolvin. Flatley with a the line, got it to Miko Makula. Makula moves in deep, he shoots. Keen's out to make the pass save. And Casper is there to clear the rebound. All the Bruins back into their own zone. Now start out of there. Cortnall checked in center by Makula. Antonelli plays it rink wide for Paul Boudelier. Slaps it in around the board. Bossy goes in after it. It got away from Keen. Trotte is there now. Ryan Trotte put back in the net. Centered Bossy to the top. He scores! Neutral 
here right from the drop of the puck, particularly if Brian Trotche wins it. He's able to head right out into the center ice area, waiting for the defenseman, Ken Morrow in this case, to bank it off the board. They maybe try to set it up for that particular reason, but I, I would have to think it would come after the draw. Now Bossy moved up, got the puck. Mike Bossy dumps it down the right wing boards. Tonelli comes in after it. It stayed outside the line. Bossy gets tripped up. The Bruins with 22 seconds left. Can't get over the line. Here's Bossy with the empty net. picks up the loose puck, skates in, and pops it into the open net. Goal number 500. That's his 26th goal of the season. His second goal of the game. And the Islanders pull off a 7-5 win. Wow. It all began with a presentation to Denny Potman at 8 o'clock as he became the honoree. Having broken Bobby Orr's record as the highest scoring defenseman in the history of the National Hockey League. The Islanders trail going to the third period. It was only three to two, folks. And look at your final score. The Islanders seven and the Boston Bruins five. We'll be back with a recap right after these messages.
remarkable hockey game. The Islanders won 7-5 over the Boston Bruins. It started out with a celebration for Denny Potvin, and it ended with a standing ovation for Michael Bossy, who scored two goals, including his 500, the, only the 11th player in National Hockey League history to get 500 goals. Congratulations and your feelings about the event. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel good. I feel... Uh better because the team won. We were struggling tonight, but uh, some uh, great performances by, by some, some of the guys in the uh, third period, by everyone, but especially by uh, John and, and Brian, who uh, scored some great goals to, to help uh, make that comeback possible. Michael, we're going to take a look at uh, the goal. I'd like to get your version from the faceoff. Well, the puck was one here. I tried just to flip it by him. I knew I knew Johnny T would be going, and I just couldn't get a get a hold out of it. I knew Johnny and Brent were streaking. Uh, Johnny and Trotz were streaking down the middle. I fell down, and Johnny got the puck off of him, and all of a sudden it was there, and uh, I just skated in. I thought the guy threw a stick. I thought I saw a stick come flying in front of me there. Michael, there was some discussion between Jiggs and Ed about at the face-off circle before the face-off uh, that there might be some sort of plan to get you the puck. What kind of discussion was there, if any? Well, there would have been uh, a lot of guys fighting for it. Johnny had two goals, Brian had two goals, and I was going for my 500th. So if, uh, if there would have been a loose puck, there would have been three hungry guys <laughs> going after it. There wasn't a discussion. We were just making sure that we knew who we were, who we were going to take in our own end. I think uh, perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the accomplishment is that it not only was a landmark, but it was decisive. You put the club ahead with a dramatic goal, and then you clinched it when uh, it was a bit of a cliffhanger, and uh, the bossy drama just never ends. The one goal that always comes to mind, fans who talk about Michael Bossy goals, is the one against Vancouver. Is that the one that you like the best? Well, I think as, as far as, uh, as spectacular goes, uh, it's probably uh, one of the most spectacular I've scored and, and uh, one that I like to remember. But, uh, you know, there's always a lot of guys who have been involved in a lot of my goals. And, uh, you know, it's always nice to remember the one, uh, my 50 and 50, where, where Trotz got, JT got me the puck there. And, uh, you know, Brian is... is Past me, a number of pucks were uh, were I've got a lot of goals on. So, you know, uh, everyone on the team has has helped in uh, in 